afternoon, everyone, wherever you are, and we thank you so much for tuning in to today's Miami men's baseball here from McKee Field at Hayden Park. It's the Miami Redhawks taking on the Central Michigan Chippewas here in day three of the weekend action. Andrew Elvis alongside Jeff Middleton. And Jeff, the Red Hawks going for the sweep here. How can they do it here against the hungry Central Michigan Chippewas who are really reeling? Yeah, I think I think the best way to do it is is just I mean yesterday we saw them really get into it with the bats after the you know, they had to they got through the starter for the Chippewas and that's been their problem was even in the first game when they won on the walk off hit by David Novak is they got through their their first their Friday starter Adam Marakic who threw 135 pitches around that area which is incredible but once they were able to get rid of the starter they were able to you know get the get the bats going get the offense on the board had 20 hits yesterday 15 runs just an impressive performance from the offense but it took them a little bit so trying to get through their starter make them work and and really really get those bats going through the middle innings. Starting for the Red Hawks today it's going to be Nick Var Davis once again. He's coming out for. Really another outing, he's always been great here for Miami. Last pitch against Bowling Green where he lasted five innings, eight hits, nine runs, four of them were earned, three walks and three strikeouts. But he's been good, Vardivis has been on fire and the Red Hawks are hoping to get some length out of him, facing off against this top half of this Bowling Green lineup. Starting off with Bryson Webb who's had a good day in the middle infield spot for the Chippewas. First pitch, and we are officially on our way. It's down low for a ball, official time, 12.59 p.m. Eastern time. A little ahead of schedule there. Yeah, we were talking about it before this game started, but these Chippewas uniforms yesterday, we saw we saw the maroon on, on Friday, we saw the gray, and today we're seeing the Savannah bananas type fit. We got uh, got the yellow pants, yellow <laughs> yellow jersey with like maroon across the front. Miami just going with the simple red and white, red red jersey, white pants, red socks. Two and old little check swing number on the right side. It goes foul. Two and one. And yeah, I'm gonna be honest here. The MAC has some of the prettiest uniforms. For sure. In Probably the country. You got Central Michigan. You got Ohio. You got come on the Reds, the baby Reds for That's the right. Red Sox. Red Hawks. Red Sox. Red Sox. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. No, I love the. Uh, they got the maroon stripe outlined by white stripes on the top and the on the bottom, and it says Chippewas and yellow yellow text in front too on top of the maroon. It's it's very love the look. It's unique. I like it. Two balls and two strikes here to Bryson Webb. Trying to start something here for Central Michigan. A ripper on the left side, it goes foul, and he'll see another pitch. For Bryson Webb, it's the redshirt freshman from De Pere, Wisconsin. Second year at CMU. He didn't play last year, but trying to make a strong impact. He's played well this weekend. And yeah, I was going to say, he's been very good this weekend for, for the Chippewas. Hammers this one out to right, running over just a bit is Trey Keels to his right. He'll make the catch, and that's the first out of the first for Central Michigan. And this weekend, it's pretty much been Central Michigan pitching. How can the Red Hawks kind of attack that? The Red Hawks, they haven't had a ton of length from their starters. It's no, we, we saw yesterday you know, the Red Hawks starter Landon Looper was was out there for only an inning, wasn't able to get anything out as that one's shot through the gap to between second and first base for a base hit. Jacob Donahue for the Chippewas. It's a first base runner here for for the visitors, but I mean, like I said, Landon Looper only got through one inning. He was he was taken out as after loading the bases in the top of the second. But we saw Patrick Mastry on Friday. You know, he he didn't pitch. He pitched well, he just kind of got some, you know, the, the Chippewas batters were able to make some good contact and find find the gaps, but, you know, if if Artivus is able to, you know, keep runners away from the bases, I mean, this is a fast team too, they're very good at stealing bases, we saw that a little bit yesterday, but, you know, Artivus has been very good for the Red Hawks so far, and they need him to continue it today. So runner on first in the form of Jacob Donahue at the plate, Danny Westenfeld, trying to establish a threat on the base pass. The Central Michigan Chippewas who 
They had some base runners yesterday. They just couldn't score. The Red Hawks, meanwhile, they had so many opportunities, and they cashed in probably on 75% of them. They did leave a lot of base runners, but they put up 20 hits. They were killing the baseball yesterday. That's yeah, in the bottom of the seventh inning, they scored six runs. It was their best. It was their best of yesterday. But a lot of those runs came with two outs, which was which was very impressive. They just kept finding the gap and were able to, you know, keep it on the ground away from the defenders. Three straight balls. This one on the outside corner to Danny Westenfeld, the senior, playing infield today. Fourth year at CMU, was third in homers last year. Yeah, he had a he had a bomb yesterday. So they're, I mean, I'm sure they're, they're being careful with him today. Wouldn't shock me. He's, he's, he's a big guy. We saw two homers from Zach McDonald. We'll talk about that a little bit later yesterday. Also a homer from him. It's a home run party here in Oxford. Big cut at that one. Yeah, Westenfeld, 6'3", 225 pounds at first base. Got some power. He's a powerhouse, that's right. So three balls, two strikes, one out, one runner on. Vardavis delivers, check swing high, and he didn't go ball four. So it's going to be Westonfield and Donahue on first and second. One out for Mikey Murphy next up. Number one, Mikey Murphy. So here comes Mikey Murphy now, who also was pretty good yesterday. In a Couple base hits and making some good plays in the outfield as well. Only played seven games this year, but it's interesting. He's batting 136, uh, getting on base at a 136 clip as well, but slugging 409. Yesterday on the left, he caught like three consecutive fly balls. Yep. He was busy. He busy got some action the out there. Trying to advance the runners here. Westenfield hacks one foul on the right side. 0-2, he's behind. Murphy, a freshman from Manuka, Illinois, nearby Chicago. First year at Central Michigan, making a good early impact. 0-2, and, and another foul ball on the right side. Very windy yeah. here from Oxford. The weather's about 45 degrees, but don't let that fool you. It is freezing. It's a bit chilly, that's right. Yep. Got to layer up. And we're both in our winter coats here. <laughs> Strike three. Strike three called on the outside corner. Mikey Murphy goes down looking, second out of the inning. A beautiful K on the lower half. Off-speed pitch was looking. Picture perfect there from Vardavis. Yeah, awesome 79 mile per hour curveball right there. Just hung up just a little bit, got some late movement on that one, and like you said, Andrew, right on the right on the outside corner. So two outs, two runners on it makes things a little bit more interesting here for Drew Stengren, the catcher. And he fouls that one off of him for the first strike. Stengren, he's a great defensive catcher. He's doesn't put up a ton of offensive numbers, but he's very solid, and you gotta love to have a player like him who's great at defending behind the plate. 0-1, oh 0-2 oh on the outside half, similar to his last pitch against Mikey Murphy. One strike away from getting out of the first half unscathed, Nick Vardavis. Trying to keep the Red Hawks hot. The 0-2 pitch, this one. A little blooper on the left side. Fielded perfectly there. Baker underhand to Gordon. And that's going to do it for the top half of the first inning. So no runs on one hit. Two base runners were left. And the Red Hawks will go back to work. It's going to be 1-2-3 on the Miami side. You're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Thanks so much for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Stay tuned for more.
Welcome back to baseball from beautiful McKee Field at Hayden Park. It's the Red Hawk Bats going up. I'll give you the lineup. It's Ty Bonasich hitting one, Zach McDonald two, Rylan Zaborowski three, Ryan Novak hitting cleanup at the four spot, Dylan Baker five, Anthony Zarlingo at the six spot, David Novak the catcher at seven, Trey Keels at eight, and leading, ending it off is Tyler Gordon in the nine spot. Pitching for CMU, it's Evan Waters who goes a first pitch strike on the upper half. Waters, he's a lefty from Oxford, Michigan, not Oxford, Ohio. <laughs> Check swing, he went 0-2, Botasich is behind. Yeah, these top three hitters for the Red Hawks, they did their damage yesterday. Botasich went three for five with a walk, five RBIs, and then McDonald four for six with five RBIs, and then Zaborowski went four for five with a walk and one RBI. No balls and two strikes, and this one's down and away, one and two. That's what you want you guys to do. Zabrowski was, was really, I mean, especially Zabrowski, I think all four of his hits were singles yesterday, and, you know, he's he's known as a power hitter, but, man, he can, I mean, he just, he's able to find gaps, and it's it's, it's very impressive how able how consistently able he is to get bat to ball and get on base. This one is going to go foul on the left side, but... Yeah, it's, it's always great to have a three-headed monster in the top half of your lineup, Bostich, McDonald, and Zabrowski. And all these guys can hit, too, yep. for power and for also contact. Very dangerous. Things don't get easier, too, with Novak right behind him. Yeah, Bostich isn't – you know, he can hit for power, but especially recently he's just been kind of getting on base. Like, he's been he's been really, really strong at just getting on base and finding, finding gaps and – you know, grounding balls through the infield or something, anything anything that can get him on the pillows as he just did there. And this one right over the head of the shortstop, Webb. That one is going to go bouncing to the center fielder for a base hit to Brill. Ty Bonasich leads off the Red Hawks half with a leadoff single, and the Red Hawks are in business here for Zach McDonald. And McDonald, we talked about a little bit in the top half of the first, but two homers yesterday, and... I mean, a couple of those homers, he drove in runs because Ty Batisich was able to get on base with, with hits like that. Zach McDonald, you can argue who's the top batter in this lineup. It's probably most recently McDonald. Yeah, he's been the hottest for sure. Killing it. Four for six with five RBIs yesterday. Two of them homers. He absolutely turned on one late in the game just to add to the Red Hawks lead. But, yeah, he, he smoked it. I'd love to see the – the exit velocity on that one. I think it went 443, I believe, some around there. Somewhere around there, yeah. yeah. It was gone completely, no doubt about it. One and one, and this one hammered out to left. This one going back. The wind might have put it up a little bit, and the left fielder Murphy is going to catch it for the first out of the first. Off and there's the that power. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not it's not home run power just yet, but we we did see this yesterday too, like especially against the starter was a lot of good contact, but fouling off a lot of pitches, weren't able to get a lot to go, and then, you know, once once the once the starter was able to get out, I mean, they were able to get guys on base with against the starter, but nothing nothing converted, but once the starter yesterday was able to get out, they were able to find their power and, and really turn on baseballs, make good contact instead of fouling them away. McDonald flies out to left. It'll bring up Ryland Zaborowski, who led the team in homers and RBIs last year. Extra base power is not an understatement. <laughs> Strike two caught on the outside half. He's down 0-2. He also played in the MLB Draft Summer League last summer for the Trenton Thunder. It's uh, one of the top summer teams in the country. 0-2 to Zaborowski, check swing. He didn't go, so it'll be 1-2. and two. This is Waters' first start of the year. He's appeared in eight games, only pitched 11 and two-thirds innings, 14 strikeouts in those innings, so some strikeout potential here for the Chippewas pitcher. 1-2 and two to Zabo, and this one's sky high. Good reception there from Verberg. Keeps it alive, 2-2. Two Novak and Baker, the next hitters here for the Red Hawks. 
and Novak. Ooh, that was a good pitch. Called strike three on the lower half. He does not like that. Yeah, he does not like that. Left call the batter's at all. box shaking his head. Zaborowski gets rung up on an off speed pitch on the lower half that left him scratching his head. So quickly, two Red Hawks are set down in order McDonald and Zaborowski. It'll bring up Ryan Novak now, who takes the first pitch strike. Novak didn't have a great day yesterday. One for five, two strikeouts, left three men on base. But he has been one of the Red Hawks' best hitters this year so far. Hitting 308, appeared in 16 games, all 16. Hit 16 hits, four doubles, 16 RBIs as well. He's slugging 481 and getting on base 486. So he's, I mean, he's still making making pitchers work. But recently, recently, especially in this series, it hasn't felt like he's found his stride. Zaborowski hits this one into foul territory, running over on the left side. Drew what a Verger, catch. Verberg, with a head full of steam, he makes a beautiful catch right in front of the Red Hawks dugout. And that's the third out. So. Just as quickly as Ty Bottasich got on base, the Red Hawks strand them. Three consecutive Miami bats go down in order, and we'll head to the top after the second. You're watching Miami baseball here on Red Hawk Radio. Thanks so much for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Stay tuned for more in just one moment. Welcome back to baseball. Our score is 0 0 Central Michigan and Miami tied. For CMU, it'll be 6 7 8 Verberg, Loikitz, and Brill. The Chippewa hitters facing off against Vardavis for his second inning of work. First pitch, a missed ball on the catcher, Verberg, who made an awesome catch to end the first. Yeah, make a nice sliding grab, and then you're, you're next up to bat. This one downstairs near Verberg's toes, 2-0. and oh. And, yeah, that play, talk about how good these CMU catchers are just defensively. That was an instant reaction. He was up and making a great play. This one hit on the left side. It's going to go foul. So it'll be 2-1. and one. Probably pretty lucky that that one went foul because Zaborowski had trouble with it. Yeah, Zaborowski, he's got a cannon, but. Kind of fumbled that one a little bit. Yeah, bobbled that one. So who, he'll see another pitch. Spencer Verberg, the redshirt sophomore from Granville, Michigan, near Grand Rapids. His third year at CMU hit 111 last year in 16 games. And this one lined on what the left play. side. What a play from Ryland Zaborowski. Rifles wow. over to Novak for the out. What a reaction there from Zaborowski to get that right on time. Talk about making up for a potential error there. Jeez, that one was smoked right to him. He had to move to his left. Just kind of corralled it in with his, with he looked like his arm, but he got it with his glove cleanly, and you know used that cannon that he that he has over at third, and just fired it over to Ryan Novak at first for the out. 
That one had some serious heat on it. In both directions, off the bat and out of Ryland Zaborowski's glove. So quickly the first out, it'll bring up Loikitz. Drew Loikitz, the freshman from South Haven, Michigan. Swung on a missed strike there on the lower half. Beautiful off-speed pitch there from Vardavis. And his off-speed stuff has been good today. 0-2 here to Loikitz, and he swings and a misses at this one. Way downstairs, another beautiful breaking pitch downstairs, and Vardavis has retired two consecutive CMU batters here in the second. We've seen a lot of strikeouts from the Red Hawks pitchers this weekend. See uh, New Mastery, and even though he was taken out, Rather early in the Friday start, Peyton Olenek came in, pitched four innings, had 10 strikeouts. Some impressive stuff. That one's popped way high in the air. Brill pops this one up on the right side. Novak's going to catch it, and that is going to do it for the top half of the second. So a 1-2-3 second for Nick Vardavis. He's efficient, and he mows down the CMU lineup in order. We will step away for more Miami baseball. Thanks so much for tuning in. And stay tuned for the Red Hawk Bats. It's going to be 5, 6, 7. Next to come. Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. Our score 0 0 Red Hawks and the Chippewas in a stalemate in the second MAC series of the year. Dylan Baker, Anthony Zorlingo, and David Novak, your Red Hawk hitters in the bottom half of the second, facing off against Drew Waters once again. 1 0 in this one, sky high right towards the middle infield, going kind of on the right side over to the second baseman, Loikitz, and he's going to catch it for the first out. So quickly, one out. It'll bring up Anthony Zarlingo for the first time today. Zarlingo, he's a consistent hitter. Southwest Tennessee transfer hitting 275. Switch hitter, too. Can go both sides. Batting from the right here. 1 0 here to Zarlingo. Strike one on the outer half. 1 and 1. And the wind right now, <laughs> it is blowing hard. It's, it's, Could have it's an going. Impact. It is going. One and one, and Zarlingo swings out of his shoes on that one. Well downstairs, one and two. Water's throwing him a steady diet of curveballs right now, about 78, 79 miles per hour on all of them. That's three in a row. So Zarlingo quickly behind one and two, trying to start something here for the Red Hawks. The one-two pitch. There's the fastball. Leans away from that one, two and two. Last year at Southwest Tennessee Community College, he hit 317 with 45 RBIs. Skilled bat. He rips this one on the left side, fielded. 
cleanly there by the shortstop Webb. Throw over to first to Danny Westenfeld. And quickly two up, two down here for the Red Hawk Bats. So that's now five straight Miami hitters set down in order. With that, it'll bring up David Novak, hoping to break that streak against Drew Waters, who's moving efficiently just like Vardavis. First pitch is a ball. For those who may not have tuned in on Friday, David Novak was the one to hit the walk-off winner up through the middle. Swings at that one, misses it one and one. Yeah, that was a game where the Red Hawks, they were trailing two to nothing for pretty so much they the didn't score through eight game. innings. It took until the ninth. And they scored all those runs with one out in the ninth. Put on the superhero capes there. Swings of that one, one and two. Those are the games that I think manager Brian Smiley has talked about before, saying that he would rather win those kind of games than games. He prefers those games th to yesterday's just because they're close and it you know it shows the kind of resilience that the team has. Yeah, the Red Hawks, they certainly have some resilience as Novak fouls that one back. They were down in last game, but they fought back. They put up, I believe it was 11 straight runs. They were on fire. One and two in this one misses Novak, two and two. Yeah, we saw it, uh, especially on Friday and even some, some yesterday too, despite the 15 runs scored, was a lot of men left on base, a lot of opportunities to score, and, and the Miami Bats just weren't able to do anything with it. So a, a lot of, especially on Friday, a lot of situations where there would be men on first and second, and then three guys would come up, and they wouldn't be able to do anything with it. But not yesterday, especially not towards the, the, minning, the middle or the, the back half of the, of the game. Two balls and two strikes, and Novak clubs this one on the right side foul. You'll see another pitch. Novak making him work. That's a few straight foul balls. Two strikes. We saw that yesterday. It was extended at bats. Yep. Led to some op opportunities. Two and two. This one goes skipping to Verberg. Three balls and two strikes. Full count. Chippewas right now on a 13-game losing streak. Red Hawks on a two-game winning streak. Payoff pitch. This one high and outside. Ball four. It's a great at bat. Red Hawks have their first base runner of the inning. Again, just fouling off every pitch that he sees and then spitting on the ones that are way outside. He's forcing, the, forcing Waters to make an error with his pitch or, or misplace it, and he did both the, those last two pitches. That's what pati patience pays off. He's just defending with two strikes and it, and it worked. That at bat lasted a long Ooh, time. Ow. This one off the leg of the pitcher Waters. Trey Keels quickly goes over to first. He wins the race. So before I even had time to mention his <laughs> name, Trey Keels speeds over to first. It's Novak and Keels first and second with two outs for Gordon. Yeah, first pitch, first pitch Keel saw. I just shot that one up the middle. Ended up hitting Waters off the off the leg. Umpires are checking with him now, make sure he's okay. I can't imagine, especially in this weather, that felt good. Yeah. It never feels good, but looks like they're are they looking at the baseball. Umpires are checking the baseball out. Looked like Keels beat it out. That might he be did what they're beat it out. discussing. And looks like Central Michigan challenged that one. Or yeah, I guess they did. Huh. It looked yeah, it looked from here like he beat it out by, you know, half a step, but I'll be curious to see what what the ruling is on this. Because they they're they're over there, they've got a better view than we do. Yeah, we don't get a replay review. Yeah, not up here. But from what it looked like, we, we got a clear view at first. But it's up to the the crew to decide. Plan let it be, <laughs> of course, because why wouldn't you? Love the Beatles. 
They always do this at uh, Nashville Predators games when I go back home. <laughs> they always play. If there's a goal that's called on the ice, a goal, and then they have they go to review it. The opposing team challenges it. They play this song, and everybody turns their phone flashlights on and starts waving them around. I mean, you might as well. It's the second inning. Yeah. But they want to look at it. Central Michigan just – they're searching. They've, they've had a tough out-of-conference schedule. They've played Oral Roberts. They're a good team. They've played Dallas Baptist, top 20 team. And – Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State as well, yes. Lost 19 to nothing to Oklahoma State in that yeah. final game of that series. The MAC, especially in particular, they have a tough out-of-conference slate. Yep. As we get the ruling, he is safe at first. So Keels is safe at first. Red Hawks win the challenge there. And with that, it'll bring up Tyler Gordon. California kid trying to make something happen here for the Red Hawks. Two runners on, two outs. Huge RBI chance here for Miami. Wearing the hoodie. First pitch he sees, he pops this one foul on the left side. Gordon, he had a good day yesterday, but coming into yesterday, his number's not the greatest. Yeah, he got over the 200 mark in batting average yesterday. Went two for three. Keels, Keels came in and, and pinch hit for the freshman Justin Gorski, who started the rally on Friday with a stand-up triple, but yeah, Keels went two for two yesterday with an RBI. He had a great day as well. It was the middle of the lineup for the Red Hawks that, that kind of struggled. This one a little check swing on the left side. It goes foul. So Gordon's behind one and two. But yeah, Gordon, he's fighting, and he's only a sophomore, so he's got some time to... Yeah, he's shown some some good stuff so far this year. Just needs to just needs to make it to consistent. Gordon hacks this one foul again. He'll face another from Evan Waters, whose pitch count is at about 35. Probably a little bit farther ahead than where he'd like to be at this point. Still top of the second inning, or bottom of the second inning. Excuse me. Novak on second, Keels on first. Gordon at the plate, and he. Swings at this pitch. one, comes up with nothing, and Evan Waters puts down the Red Hawks' fire in the bottom half of the second. So the Red Hawks, they put two runners on. They get one base hit, no runs, and they come up with nothing. We'll head to the top half of the third. Red Hawks and the Chippewas tied at zero. You're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. Our score is 0-0. The Chippewas and the Red Hawks tied at 0 for the top half of the third. It'll be 9-1-2. Stewart, Webb, and Donahue here for Central Michigan. As Stewart takes a ball on the first pitch from Nick Vardavis, who his pitch count is in the high 20s. Very consistent. This one, a little uh. blooper on the left side. Vardavis trying to field it. 
He bobbled it, and Stewart's going to have a free pass to first. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Not not very good contact there, but enough to – didn't go far enough for Zaborowski to come in, and that left Vardavis out to his own devices, and he was just not able to keep that one – Keep that one straight, and it's going to be scored as a hit. So, after an 0 for 4 yesterday, day yesterday for Stewart, he uh, gets on base there. All it takes is one swing. That's right. You're back in the positive column. Top half of the CMU side now. It's Bryson Webb who takes a first pitch ball, just like Stewart did. And for Bryson Webb as well. Second year at CMU, but he, he's been good near the top half in terms of batting average on the Central Michigan side. Yeah, Webb scored uh, the first run for CMU on Friday. It was their only run until the sixth inning. He's uh, he's he's been very good this weekend, like you said earlier, Andrew. He's he's been very good just at the plate in the field. He's he's been. He's been strong. I mean, his his overall numbers, you'd be a little bit maybe confused by that statement, only hitting 190 to this point. But either way, he's been he's been strong. This one lined to short. The throw in time to second. Throw over to first, not in time. So Baker flips to Gordon. They get the out there. But Webb advances via the fielder's choice. One out, one on, and it'll be up to Jacob Donahue to advance him. And really, we saw last week in the Red Hawks defense, it was not good. No. This weekend, they tuned it much up well. Much better. Yeah, much better. And, I mean, Brian Smiley came in as this head coach known for his his team's defense especially. I mean, he's back at Indiana State. He was had one of the best defensive fielding percentages in the entire you know NCAA, let alone in their conference. But. Yeah, there have been a, there have been a couple series this week this this year so far this year that that the defense hasn't been I'm sure what he would have liked it to be and what the you know guys in the field would have liked it to be as well. Donahue takes the ball downstairs. Yeah, you're definitely not going to have perfect games, but to be committing three four errors a game is yeah tough. But just a bad weekend. Trying to limit the damage. Vardavis. Fires over to first, keeping Webb close. The heart of this CMU lineup coming up. Donahue up to the plate right now. Wessenfeld and Murphy, the next hitters to go. Runner going. And Here we go. Oh, no, the throw. Nearly had him in a pickle, but Webb put on the Jets, and he beats out the throw. Gets over to second with the stolen base. Yeah, Vardavis was going to check over there, and Webb just started running, but the throw from Novak at first to, to second base was just too high. Wasn't able to get into a place where the tag could be applied. Vardavis, the lefty, probably saw him going out of the corner of his eye, but by that point it was too late. Webb showing off the speed. CMU's got a runner in scoring position. Donahue trying to advance him. This one outside, two balls and a strike. Donahue already one for one today. He got the first hit of the game with a single in the first frame. Donahue's been CMU, certainly been CMU's best hitter so far this year. Runner's going. Another runner going, and he's going to beat it out. So Andy. Webb swipes two in a matter of about a minute. He's now seven for eight on the season in terms of stolen bases over stolen base attempts. Back he's tied for the team lead. At now with that with those two steal with those two stolen bases. CMU, they steal a lot. They sure do. Always a tough team to play for. This one through the gap on the left side, gonna get through for a base hit. A one out RBI single from Jacob Donahue makes it one and nothing Central Michigan here in the third. It's interesting. I mean, one, the the first run of the game scored on Friday by CMU was because of. Bryson Webb's base running, it was you know, it's a single out to, to right field, I believe, that brought him from first to third. And then a, a bloop single into, into the outfield as well brought him home. So he's been he's been one of the best base runners this entire series and you know, they're they're scoring runs because of it. Been leading the charge in that area. 
one of those teams that just love to steal. The Red Hawks, they're, they don't steal a ton. A lot more defensive minded. It, it's just so tough to kind of control these guys on the base pass. They take advantage of them a ton. Westerfield takes a ball there. Yeah, the Red Hawks have four players in their lineup today with zero attempts. <laughs> of course, the, the, the Chippewas have three, but they also have three guys with at least five, and the Red Hawks only have one in their lineup today. And that one is Zach McDonald. The <laughs> not only can he hit for power, but he can steal for base. He can steal bases too. Does it all. Zach McDonald, superstar center fielder here for the Red Hawks. And Bartovis back-to-back pickoff attempts, trying to pitch Donahue off guard, standing at first. Danny Westenfeld here takes yeah. a second pitch strike. He's shortening. He's shortening his a uh, his uh, his wind up right now. He's, you know, as much as he's worried about the guy on first, I'd be worried more about the guy at the plate because he can he can mash baseballs. And this one. Hammered foul on the right side. He's behind one and two. Martavis right now, pitch count at about 40. It was, so it was high 20s coming high into 20s. this inning. That's what, is that the fourth, fifth pickup attempt that he's had in lot. this at bat? <laughs> yep. This is nuts. Yeah, it feels like he's been throwing a lot of pitches, but only really 10, not a ton. Just because he's been continuously picking off at first, it's just been. One and two in this one. Nearly cut the edge, but it goes for a ball, two balls and two strikes to Wessenfeld. Mikey Murphy on deck and Stengren right after the DH for CMU. And this one laced out to center. McDonald running forward. He's going to make the catch. A nice running catch to center. And that's the second out. It'll bring up Mikey Murphy next. Yeah, Murphy in his first at bat struck out. So I have to imagine part of us feels a little bit more confident even with that runner on first base. You got two outs and a guy that you've already beat once. Let's see what he does here. So Murphy, just like Jeff mentioned, he struck out in. The first was for the second out, and he's got a two out chance. He hammers this one out to left. This one is going to be not enough for a homer. Zerlingo is going to catch it, and that will do it for the top half of the third inning. So CMU, they strike first. An RBI single from Jacob Donahue makes it one to nothing. Chippewas on top of the Red Hawks. Stay tuned for more Miami baseball as we head to the home half of the third. It'll be one, two, three for the Red Hawks. When we come back, you're listening to Miami baseball on Red Hawk Radio. We're back here for more Miami baseball. Andrew Elvis alongside Jeff Middleton here from Red Hawk Radio. Red Hawks, they won the first two games of the weekend series. They're going for the sweep. And it'll be one, two, three 
Bostic, McDonald, and Zaborowski here for the Red Hawks against Evan Waters for his third inning of work. First pitch is a ball to Bonasic. Bonasic has one of the two Red Hawks hits today. Now batting 311 on the season. You look at the Red Hawks batting average, you, you see 430, 350, 323. You must think, man, the Red Hawks, <laughs> it must be going undefeated. Not the case. The Mac is more of an offensive league. So they've had a couple, you know, they've had yeah. 13 to 12, 17 to 16, you know, 15, 14. Like it's just, it's been, it's been a lot of offense this year, both for both sides. The Red Hawks pitching is not been able to keep the even when the offense has has been good in games the, the Red Hawks pitching has not been good enough to keep the the runs off the scoreboard and, and sometimes it's the Red Hawks defense as well so Bodicich in a 2-2 count he fouls this one back he'll get another but yeah looking back to last year's pitching stats the highest one was in the fours that was the lowest DRA and then it went out from there Mac Big offensive league, the 2-2 pitch, this one. A little nubber to the pitcher Waters. He underhand throws to Westonfield, and that's the first out quickly. So one quick out, it'll bring up Zach McDonald, who's going to try and change the tide of this one here in the third. Yeah, when we talk about the, the Red Hawks pitching, just to add on to that, I think one of their issues, they've had some good stuff. I mean, Patrick Mastrian has been very good as their Friday starter, but the, the walks and the, the, the control has been the issue, not the stuff itself. But, I mean, you know, against Oakland on that Friday game where they, they the Red Hawks won 21-3, to it was Mastrian struck out, I believe, six or seven batters, but hit five. And that's been kind of the tale of the season for the, for the Red Hawks. But even yesterday, Landon Looper was... You know, he didn't have bad stuff. It was just a lot of walks and allowing, you know, guys to get on base for free. It just he, That just can't happen. Donald up 2-0 and on the count here, and he takes one high, 3-0. and Yeah, the Red Hawks, they, they got some pitchers, got some serious firepower. Lots them. of strikeout power yep. for sure. Just can't locate sometimes, and it's a little difficult. 3-0, and and this one high ball four, a four-pitch walk to Zach McDonald for Ryland Zaborowski. Up next. Yeah, I mean, Peyton Olenek, I would say to this point, has been probably the Red Hawks' best pitcher this season. He's been fantastic. Him and him and Patrick Mastrian have probably been the top two pitchers for them this year, so far at least. Would love to see some more guys get, get into that, you know, get into that classification. Check swing on the upper half here to Zaborowski. He's down 0-1. They also got some good bullpen arms, too. Carson yes. Byers, one of them. Connor Preisel. Yeah, Connor Preisel saw him yesterday. He was fantastic. Had some good moments. And he takes the ball outside. 1-1. One one. Just about putting it all together. That's going to be how. Yeah. Luke Ross, another guy that played yesterday and was very good for the Red Hawks. Runner going, the throw is not in time. A stolen base there from Zach McDonald, who gets yet another stolen base. He can do it all. He can hit, he can <laughs> run, he can field. He can walk. Awesome. He can walk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Six for seven now on the year in stolen bases. And he's fast. He was moving on that one. Good Red throw Hawks. down, though. I mean, it just, uh, just not able to beat it out. Red Hawks are really lucky to have Zaborowski and... McDonald hitting both yeah, back. Yeah, not to a bad back. dynamic duo for sure. Zaborowski takes slider for a ball, three balls and one strike. To Zaborowski, who struck out in the first earlier, fouls this one back. Count is even and full, three balls and two strikes. Ryan Novak standing on deck, and after him, Dylan Baker. We'd like to see Ryan Novak get, get going here next time he's up at bat. Great take there from Zaborowski. Payoff pitch, ball four downstairs, and the Red Hawks have two ducks on the pond here for Ryan Novak up now. 
And, you know, the freshman from Canton, Georgia, Ryan Novak, he's had some shining moments. This could be another one here. Huge opportunity in the third against Central. And first pitch, Novak sees he hits this one decently far out to left. Busy day at the office there for Mikey Murphy. Another one, and he makes the second out. So one pitch, one out to Novak. It'll bring up Baker. You like that approach from Novak, Jeff, or you want those long at bats? Well, it's interesting because, I mean, like we said before, before the game started, was, you know, the, the Red Hawks have really struggled with guys on base against these starters. And as much as Ryan Novak has, has been good this season, he's, he's struggled in this series. And, you know, I, I'm sure that was a pitch he liked to see, just wasn't able to get anything on it. But, you know, he's been one of your best hitters so far this year. You'd, you'd probably like to see him take a couple more. Just try and at least work the pitch count up before you smack one out there. Hardy hack there from Dylan Baker. He's quickly behind 0-2. Yeah, this middle of the order just hasn't been as good as you'd probably like it to be. Yesterday, ev yesterday pretty much everybody was good in, in their own sense, but it just you know you, you need to see you need to see pitches. I mean, you, this this top of the lineup can you know get walks and get these base hits and stuff like that. I mean, so can the middle of the order. They've they've got some of their best hitters as well. Just you know, got to get the count, the pitch count a little higher. And you know, Novak, even if you work a walk, it's still. You're still on base. It's still a chance. Baker hits this one in the air out on the right side. It'll go foul. You're lucky the right fielder was shifted yeah. over. Otherwise, that would have been catchable. Check it, Donahue, the right fielder. He's got some speed. Six foot, 170. But it goes foul, and Baker's going to have another one. Baker, also one of those guys who he's a great defender, but also having a sneaky good season behind the plate. Yeah, he's been good. I think his his contact has been has been good. Just not two man steal. Look at that double steal there for the Red Hawks. So no throw is taken. Zabrowski and McDonald each go into scoring position. Yes, yeah, with two outs. So you, I mean, just get one through the gap here. You don't need anything. Don't need anything crazy. Becomes an even bigger opportunity here for Baker. Good eye. Downstairs and out. Three balls and two strikes on Dylan Baker here. Evan Waters, his pitch count nearing 60. He's going to want to get out of this one in a hurry. Full count payoff pitch. And inside, ball four. Looks like it might have hit him. I'm not sure, though. Either yeah. way, either way, it's might a walk, have. but. He, kind of, he tried to get out of the way of that one, and the ump immediately came out in motion towards first. So Baker gets on base with a walk, hit by pitch, whatever you want to call it. Either way, he advances. So it's bases full of Red Ox here for Anthony Zarlingo. Two yeah. outs also. You're down one nothing. You got two outs here. Saw some great at-bats with two outs yesterday. So let's see if this, this bottom of the middle of the order can really get something going. Here's our lingo with the switch hitter. I mean, not a bad matchup either, lefty righty. Our lingo takes the first pitch strike right down Broadway. Grounded out too short in the second. And he's looking to score at least one. Baker on first, Zabrowski on second, McDonald on third. And this one blooped out to right. And Donahue's not going to move anywhere. <laughs> he catches the final out, and that's going to do it for the home half of the third. So the Red Hawks threaten. They have three on, but they strand them all, and the score remains one to nothing here at home. You're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Stay tuned for more Miami Baseball in just one moment.
Welcome back to baseball. Our score one and nothing Central Michigan on top of the Miami Redhawks. It's five, six, seven, Stengren, Verberg, and Loikitz facing off against Nick Vardavis for another inning. First pitch he sees, he fouls his back, he's down 0 and 1. Yeah, Vardavis has looked good so far this outing. Just gotta just gotta keep that up through this top of the fourth. Hasn't had like you know much strikeout power as that one is shot out center field and there's a great catch by McDonald sorry to steal the play-by-play -play from you Andrew but that <laughs> was fantastic running catch there this one it was shot out of a cannon pretty right. much from the bat of Stengren and come on Zach McDonald <laughs> he's I, gonna be there <laughs> you just know it feels like I'm a broken record but he can really do it all and looking like Mike Trout out there nice running catch so quickly the first out Verberg lays down a bunt on the left side and it rolls foul. So he'll he'll retreat back to home. But yeah, it's just these outfielders so athletic. McDonald Keels is certainly See, all of them have their own speedy kind of attribute to them. Sardlingo as well. Yep. In the past, baseball you usually didn't have speedy outfielders. Now it kind of seems on every team you have all speed and play to cover so much parts. ground out there. I don't think people understand how, you know, how fast you really have to be to be a great outfielder. Berberg fouls one back. He's down 0 and 2. You know, even some of the biggest ones, I mean Aaron Judge is a big dude, but he's fast. I mean Bryce Harper when he was playing right field was he's he's not big. He's not Aaron Judge big, but he's still the big dude. Yeah. Ball taken on the outside, one and two. Only 11 days from MLB opening day. Very excited. Wish we could just simulate the days. I know, right? <laughs> get up to opening day. <laughs> we got college, though. Yeah, I would say can't we go got wrong this. Here. We can't complain. This one outside, two balls and two strikes. Spring training, though, feels like it's forever. So he was reading it's a couple a articles time. on that. It's 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 a long time, and I know you have to get guys warmed up. But man, it just feels like there's a lot of injuries at this point as well. It's just guys, you know, you're just playing a bunch of guys and stuff like that. Oh, that one clips him. So Verberg gets hit by Vardavis. There's that control we're talking about. Yep, that one just kind of escaped Vardavis at the wrong time, and he will take first. So, one out hit by pitch. It'll bring up Loikitz to the plate here for Central Michigan. The Red Hawks, they've spent the past three weeks at home. They've got two games in the midday. This one laid down by Loikitz. Picture perfect it's a bunt. fantastic bunt, yeah. And he's going to take first quickly to back to back. Base runners for CMU and they're in business. This is this is exactly why taking advantage with the bases loaded is so important. I mean, now you've you've worked into a guy on a man on first, man on second situation. With Jake Brill coming up, 10, 10 games started, thirteen games played, two twenty two average, slugging two fifty, but getting on base three sixty two. And if you get this guy on base, you're lucky that there's guys in front of him because he's stolen seven bases and on seven attempts. So two Chippewas on the base pass. First pitch strike to Jake Brill. Went for a bunt there. Didn't get, didn't come back in time though. Sinfield kind of spaced back a little bit. Wind is really going crazy here. Our broadcasting tent going back and forth. This one's That's right. Swung on a miss, 0-2. It's yeah. so nice when the sun's out, and then all of a sudden the, there's like a little bit of clouds, and then the wind hits. Still a beautiful day, though, just not the ideal temperatures. Let's just go with that. So Brill behind 0-2 here on Vardavis. He's in a little bit of a jam, and he throws back to second, keeping Verberg close. Brill's the eight hitter, and then after him, Eli Stewart. Vardavis really hoping to just keep it on the bottom half for this inning. Don't want to flip the lineup over. 
This one fired home and one whacked on the right side. Foul by Jake Brill. So just trying to fend off the fend off the pitch with two strikes there, just a little bit kind of a wave and see whatever happens, happens. Jake Brill yesterday took a pitch to the face. He was yeah, down that for was a little not bit. Pretty. He was up and he was making some plays as well. And another foul ball. This at bat continues. Going on to that point earlier, the Red Hawks, they were, they were home for the past three weeks. Series versus Oakland versus Bowling Green and now versus Central Michigan. They've got two weekday games versus Butler and Cincinnati. And then that after that, fun. they're on to the road. This one high and outside, one and two. Central That's Michigan all. dugout getting a little rowdy over there. They were rowdy yesterday. They were. And then they got quieted <laughs> down <laughs> after the <laughs> after the rally by these Red Hawks. Nonetheless, I was talking with, with a buddy of mine yesterday while we were at the game, and I was impressed with their ability to, to stay positive through some tough state, tough games. Oof, that was this one gets through Zaborowski's glove. Coming home to score is Verberg. The throw at third. In time, he gets out Loikitz, but advancing over to second is Jake Brill. A one out RBI single on the left side, and Central Michigan is up two to nothing. Yeah, I mean, just a, a nice piece of hitting there by Jake Brill. Just was able to send that one hard on the ground. Zabrowski didn't get his glove down on the ground to field that one, but great play from Zarlingo and left to just fire that one in, and Zabrowski applied the tag. So things get a little bit easier here for Eli Stewart. Still got a runner on in Jake Brill, but interested to see if Brill goes for third here. He's Taking jumping a huge over there. Lead. Yeah. Little chopper, awkward angle off oh of his man. bat, and Zabarevsky trying to field it. He bobbles it. So two runners at the corners here for CMU, and back to the top half we go. Yeah, Ryland Zabarevsky over at third base giveth, and he taketh away. He's it's been like that this year, and, and I mean, you know, you're not expecting perfect fielding over there, obviously. But you're not going to get Gold Glove defense. No, yeah. and I, I, but you, I mean, you think about earlier the South Carolina series, and when the, the first Friday game when they played South Carolina, that entire that five run inning that ended up winning the game for the Gamecocks was because of a Ryland Zabrowski error. He dropped a, a, a pretty easy pop fly, and so you know he does have that arm, which is very useful, but. Sometimes it's just the fielding can get a little bit troublesome over there. Yeah, it's never easy to play the hot corner. No, you know it's not. It's not. It's not easy yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. Just some some mental errors or some fundamental errors that you can you know see from up here that have been kind of plaguing the the Red Hawks over there on that left side of the infield. And it's always good to have a a big guy like Zaborowski. Yeah, He's absolutely. 6'5 and 230, just a mountain. Red Hawks are lucky to have them. CMU side getting loud now. Got to love the back and forth banter between <laughs> these MAC rivals. But here, here you go. If you're a Central Michigan fan listening in, this is what you want. You got the leadoff hitter in the one spot, Bryson Webb. He's got two runners on first and third with two outs. CMU up two to nothing, trying to make it more. Artavis delivers, strike one on the outside corner. Good one there from Nick. Bryson Webb as well, flew out and he had a fielder's choice in the third. Also stole two bases, speedy, speedy guy. 0-1, this one down and away, 1-1. Artivis and this Red Hawks defense just trying to put an end to the CMU scoring run here. One and one, and this one hammered out to left. Could be trouble. It is. One run will score. Coming around second to third is Eli Stewart. That's a two-out RBI single from Bryson Webb. 
And CMU is up three to nothing here in the fourth. Yeah, that one was hit really hard and really far when it ended up bouncing off the walls. Our lane go good over there and left to the field it, get it in quickly. Otherwise, I mean, Stewart was being waved around until Zarlingo was able to get that ball and fire it in. But nonetheless, that's another run given up for Vardivus on a day that where he's been just okay. It's felt like hasn't been hasn't been as great as as you'd probably like him to be. But you know, not a bad day by any means. And he's now facing Jacob Donahue, second batter in this order. Little chopper to the shortstop bounce and throw is Ooh, in time. That but was close. That was close. Gordon threw it in time, but it's a little just high. A little high to Ryan Novak for the out. So CMU gets two more, an RBI single from Webb and an RBI single from Jake Frill. Makes it three to nothing. Chippewas on top of the Redhawks. We'll take a break and head to the home half in just one minute. We're back for the home half of the fourth. The Red Hawks trail three to nothing after a two run fourth from CMU. Miami will try and answer back. David Novak quickly hammers this one out to uh, left. It goes foul. Barely a close one. Yeah. So Novak goes down 0 and 1. It's 7 8 9. Novak, Keels, and Gordon for Miami. Got to talk quickly here. These batters making plays <laughs> before I can mention their names. But Evan Waters out for his fourth inning of work, and, you know, he's given up two hits, but he's been pretty good. He's here held for them Central scoreless. Michigan. Hasn't been any damage even when runners have been on base. He's got three walks, though, so it'll be interesting to see if they can make him work again, sitting at 64 pitches. One and one here to Novak. He fouls this one back. One and two. Novak, he's been the primary catcher here for Miami this year, they had kind of a, a tandem of catchers last year, but it's really been the Ryan Novak show this year. He fouls another one back, and the count stays one and two. Ty Bodicic as well is also a catcher by trade, but he's been the DH pretty much the entire year. One and two to Novak again, and this one high, two balls and two strikes. I saw this in Novak's at bat earlier, his first at bat of the game. He was fouling off a lot of pitches, seeing Waters well, and made him work, and then ended up working a walk. So, again, there's another foul ball. I think that's three or four in this at bat alone. It's only two, two count as well. And you hope as a batter, just want to find that right, right pitch and crank it. Yep. Get those hips through and turn on it. Another 2-2 two -two pitch Ooh. in this one. Escapes Waters' hands at an inopportune time. The count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Good play there from Verberg as well. CMU, they both have great defensive catchers. The payoff pitch to Novak, and this one plunks him right on his back. He starts out the inning with a hit by pitch. It'll bring up Trey Keels next. 
And Miami was down until the fifth inning, or until the, the bottom of the sixth inning yesterday. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it hasn't been uncharacteristic of them to be down until the middle innings towards the later later stages of the game and then really turn it on. But, you know, you, you got to, you get you get men on men on base. You get you're getting walks, so and you're getting some decent contact as well. But you just gotta you'd like to see him get ready earlier. Trey Keels up to the plate, swings through that one, mo and one. Keels, the West Virginia transfer. He also played high school ball at IMG. One of few Red Hawks who also spent some time at IMG. Swings at that one. He's quickly behind 0 and two. So Keels just trying to string together an, an at bat here. He was one for one with a single in the second. Takes the ball high, one and two. Yeah, not a lot of velocity from Waters. I mean, still sitting around 89 miles an hour on those fastballs, but was able to really get some good run on him and make Keels swing through him. This one, back to back balls, both pretty much in the same real estate, two and two now. We can't see if there's any CMU pitchers. I don't believe there is. Warming up. He's at about 70, so I assume he's going to last this inning and one more potentially. Swung on and missed. Strikeout swinging on Trey Keels right down Broadway, 87 miles right through the pipes. And that's the first out of the fourth for Miami. Yeah, I would assume that fastball has some pretty good run on it because that one was 87 miles per hour, and, and Keels, that's, I mean, he had three swings and misses that entire at bat, so, I mean, he ended up striking out swinging, but, you know, he's not not a super fast pitcher. We saw a lot of velocity yesterday, lots of velocity yesterday. Yeah. Whereas today it has not been that much. CMU pitching on Friday, it was Marat Kitsch. He threw eight innings, allowed seven hits, he threw 130 pitches, 11 strikeouts also is. There's another swing and miss. Gordon. Got to tip a little bit into the glove, but still. Got a little piece of that one. Yesterday as well, the central pitcher, Keegan Botka, threw 111 pitches. Might be leaning towards that as Waters is nearing 80 now. But that, that is a lot on the arm, I was going to say, bet. CMU's... Manager Jake Sable's been really leaving his starters out there for as long as they can go. Both over 100 pitches in, in, two, <laughs> in two outings. It's Pops this one in the air on the left oh. side. Almost some trouble. Stewart and Webb looking for that. <laughs> but Stewart finally gets it. And that's quickly two outs on the Miami side. But yeah, pretty much. So Sable, the manager for CMU. He was a former pitcher for the Chippewas in the early 2010s. It's a bold strategy to just put out your arms for so, so you're not, long. You're not even seeing MLB arms go that long most of the time. Modisic cranks one on the left side into the Miami bullpen. Red Hawks back to the top half. Modisic, McDonald, Zaborowski, the next guys in order. But there's two outs, and Miami's once again trying to replicate the opportunity that they had last inning. They had bases loaded, and two outs couldn't cash in. 0-1, and, and Botasic takes a good one on the outer half. Nearly a strike, but it's called a ball 1-1. One and one. Novak stands on first after a leadoff hit by pitch, and this one goes outside close to Botasic, two and one. He didn't move though, he was ready for that to hit him. <laughs> I mean, if they're coming towards you, I was gonna say, might as well why take Why not them. at this point? Ooh. Two and one and. Swung at that one. Yeah, felt the wind on that one. Yeah. Got a piece of that one. Count will go even two balls and two strikes and waters at mid 80s right now and set him down with one strike. The 2 2 pitch home and this one skips to Verberg for a ball. We've kind of seen that more from waters 
He's been throwing consistent strikes, but sometimes they just escape his arm. Novak on first, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Red Hawks trying to keep the inning alive. Here's the pitch. This one out and away, ball four. And the Red Hawks have two runners on here. Two outs for Zach McDonald next up. If you want a guy up at the plate, this is the guy you want with two runners on. He's the, currently the tying run. Still plenty of time, obviously, but this top of the order has been doing a really good job of getting on base and giving the Red Hawks an opportunity to, to, to come back in this. Looks like we're going to have a little meeting on the mound. No, no, no arms up in the bullpen, though, so it's just going to be a, a meeting probably just to figure out how to pitch to, to McDonald. Central Michigan pitching coach Aaron Hilt having a chat here with Evan Waters, who I don't believe he's getting relieved, but you got two outs, you just need you get one quick out, and you can go back to your half. But things can get a little sticky here for CMU, McDonald and Zabrowski back to back. You know, it's rare to have your top half, all three of them have bad days. That's right. And certainly so today, you know, you get two walks from McDonald and Zabrowski. Those two are, aren't going to be quiet for much longer. It should seem. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what you know Hilt is saying to him. It's just that you know he's just telling him how to pitch to to two guys who can really really match the ball. So here's an RBI chance here for Zach McDonald. The Red Hawks trying to get their first run of the day. First pitch is close but low. Very Jeez. close. <laughs> 1-0. McDonald walked in the third, flew out in the first. Got two runners on. Bodicic on first, Novak on second. Here's the pitch. Outside and away. Two balls and no strikes. Things can really get away from you in a hurry. There were a ton of two-out runs last game from the Red Hawks. Could be in a similar situation today. Two runners on, two outs, and strike taken on the outer half. Two and one to McDonald. Zabrowski stands up behind, no, excuse me, McDonald. Two balls and a strike. Waters delivers in this one outside, three and one. This is why you have that meeting, just in case you do end up going into this kind of count against a hitter like McDonald, and you have Zaborowski up behind him. Red Hawks, they've been fighting all weekend. Can they bring another jab back to the Chippewas? Check swing into the glove. Got a piece of that one. Three balls and two strikes, and this pitch becomes even bigger here for Evan Waters. At 86 pitches now. Huge pitch upcoming. The payoff pitch home. McDonald fouls it back. <coughs> this at bat kind of encapsulating how the Red Hawks and the Chippewas have played all weekend. Back and forth, back and forth. Who's going to give first? Payoff pitch home. Ball high. Ball four. And the Red Hawks are in once business again. once again. <laughs> Bases loaded, two outs for Ryland Zaborowski here in the fourth. This is where you need your best hitter. And I mean, third base coach, Kyle Truwin having a chat here with Ryland Zaborowski. Bases full of Red Hawks for the second consecutive inning. McDonald on first, Botticic on second, Novak on third. With one swing of the bat, the Red Hawks can take the lead. This is the guy you want up to do it. Waters delivers, and this one skips to Verberg for a ball. But you got Ryan Novak on deck. You wonder if he, I mean, it would be interesting to, to see if, I mean, do they even pitch to Zaborowski? I mean, they're going to. 
in the sense that there's still two outs, but you have a guy you sacrifice the run for to go up against the guy who's really struggled so far this this series. And that's why you pitched to him right there. <laughs> Zaborowski skies this one out to shallow right. Whoa. And close. Donahue. Yeah, he, he had it, but he was Looks like the wind might have taken it a little bit. Maybe a step or two behind the ball. It makes the catch, and that's gonna do it for the third out. So the Red Hawks, they threaten again, but Zaborowski leaves them stranded. And we're gonna head to the top half of the fifth. The score stays three to nothing. CMU on top of Miami. We've got more baseball soon to come here on Red Hawk Radio. Maybe St. Cloud. Welcome back to baseball in the top half of the fifth. Andrew Revis alongside Jeff Middleton. We thank you so much for spending your Sunday afternoon with us here on Red Hawk Radio. For CMU, it's 3-4-5. Weston Field, Murphy, and Stengren, the hitters, facing off against Nick Vardavis for another inning. Vardavis. Last game against Bowling Green, he lasted five innings and he's already moved past four. He's been efficient. And again, not you know, not a terrible day. He's been he's had some really good pitches and, and you know done his part to try and keep runners off base. Allowed six hits, only one walk, two strikeouts for him. Not you know not a lot of strikeout stuff today. Two and one, two and two. It's a nice curveball there. Some great movement on it. Be not a great day, but not a not a bad day by any means. Just kind of a, you know, middle of the road. You know, your starter doing doing what he needs to do. This one swung. Fouled. Might have gotten a piece of that. Yeah. It looked like he was. He hacked through it. Empty, <laughs> but got a piece of that. It's a little hard to see back here. The count stays alive. Got a nice railing in front of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right over the bat. Certainly not helpful. Two balls and two strikes. Westenfield cranks one out to right. Could be trouble off the base of the wall. And foul. It's going to go foul. That one. Very lucky. Separated by probably a foot or two in the far right corner. Man, that could have been trouble. I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, Keel's got over there. That's why. I mean, that's that's we talked about earlier how all, all these Miami outfielders have speed in their in their kind of toolkit. But Keel's got over there pretty quickly. Would have probably just been a double, but either way, double with no outs is not not a good thing. Honestly, could have been a triple. Just the way CMU's been so aggressive. Yeah. Another two-two pitch, and this one is just a tad high there on Danny Westenfeld. Senior from Plainfield, Illinois. His fourth year with the Chippewas. The payoff pitch home, 
Downstairs, ball four. And Central Michigan starts off another inning with a leadoff walk here in the fifth. Left fielder, Mikey Murphy. So a leadoff walk here for Danny Westenfeld and the Central Michigan Chippewas. And with that, it'll bring up Mikey Murphy with no outs. Tried to lay down a butt. Pretty much the entire infield came in. Yep. Murphy 0 for 2 on the day, but willing to willing to make a sacrifice. Get Westenfeld over to second base. First pitch of ball. This one is not a ball. This one hammered out to right. Keel's making a long run Great to the catch. wall. Great catch. For the first out. That one was pretty much about 3 35, 340, somewhere in there. It was it's on the warning close. track. Yeah. He made a little over the shoulder grab and now it's one out with man on first. So a long first out will bring up Drew Stengren here for CMU. Got a runner on first, up three, trying to make it more. And Vardavis throws over to first to keep Westenfield close. But yeah, it feels like if you just give one bad pitch, the game can turn in an instant. Red Hawks fortunate for some good corner defense. This one hit directly to Keels. What a catch. He runs over, makes a phenomenal catch. Double play. Look at that. And a double play due to some lazy base running from Danny Westenfield. You do not see that <laughs> very often. That was a 9-3 double play. And we're going to head to the bottom half of the fifth. So some great defense from the Red Hawks. We'll turn it over to the Miami side. It's been a fun one here from McKee Field. It'll be four, five, six, Novak, Baker, and Zarlingo. When we come back, you're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Welcome back to Miami Baseball here on Red Hawk Radio, bottom of the fifth here in Oxford for this St. Patrick's Day edition of Miami Baseball. Ryan Novak stepping into the plate, stepping into the batter's box, 0 for 2 on the day. As he takes a look at strike one early, 84 miles per hour on the outside. CMU leading in this game at 3 nothing. also leading the hits battle 6-2, to two. Miami with the only error as well. Evan Waters back on the mound for the visitors. Quickly ahead 0-2 here against the struggling Ryan Novak. Had a couple of couple of days this series where he just hasn't, you know, hasn't had the hasn't had the juice he's had in prior series. He looks at that one way outside for ball one. The good thing for Novak as well, you know, he's a freshman. He's got a plenty ton of, of time, room. that's right. But to see just such a hot start, it's definitely encouraging for the Miami faithful. Looks at that one high and away. They even the count at two and two. This is a portion of the game here. If you're a Miami fan, you 
Just want to keep trying. Just want to keep fighting. Two straight innings with bases loaded. All three runners left on bases. Novak gets a little foul tip on that one. Off-speed pitch at 76 miles per hour. But yeah, like you said, Andrew, you just gotta you just gotta keep trying, keep keep getting on base at any way you can. And I mean, it's important, especially at this stage of the game where Miami yesterday, you know, took over. As Novak shoots that one into left center field, and that one will drop in for a base hit. The center fielder and the left fielder for the Chippewas coming in, but not able to make the grab. That was Mikey Murphy in left and Jake Brill in center, but that was just able to drop in. She kind of shot a little bit high, not able to field it. And now we've got a man on first here at the key field at Hayden Park for the Red Hawks. And that one, I believe the wind might have changed that one. That one's bunted down the first baseline, but will go foul. Dylan Baker up at the plate. Baker 0 for 1 on the day. Batting 317 on the season. Yeah, like you said, I think the, the wind may have may have gotten that as it's it is blowing today. As you can hear even probably on our mics. It's been at times it's been bad. The sun was just out and now it now it's gone behind the clouds again. Off and on, off and That's on. That's right, yeah. As Baker shoots that one right to the shortstop. Yeah. And that one's thrown over to first just to make sure that Novak doesn't get too far away. But great play there by Bryson Webb. The CMU shortstop to grab that one on the line. Yeah, Central Michigan's defense has been so good all weekend. And yeah. add another one to the highlight reel. Bryson Webb, right place, right time. Quickly a first out here in the fifth. Anthony Zarlingo, the switch hitting outfielder now up at the plate, batting again as a righty against the lefty Waters. Waters with a 6.94 coming into today, 6.94 ERA, I should say, 14 strikeouts and 11.2 innings pitched. This count goes even one and one after a first pitch strike. Nope. You mentioned Chippewa's, the Chippewa's defense. Jacob Donahue mentioned it on the broadcast Friday, and I'm sure it was mentioned yesterday as well, but Jacob Donahue is one of six players. He was an all-MAC defensive player of the year last year, one of six players to have a, a thousand fielding percentage perfect in Ooh. the outfield last last year. Did not know that. Just awesome. And it's just so underrated to have an outfielder like that who just reels in all the fly balls right to him. It doesn't matter where you hit it. He's probably going to be there. <laughs> the count goes even there on Zarlingo. Two and two with one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning from Oxford, Ohio. Waters checks on the runner at first. It's going to throw home. He deals off speed. Zarlingo grounds that one to the third baseman. He throws that over. Close play at first, but the out is made by Eli Stewart over at third base. A little bit of a hop over to the first baseman, Westenfeld. But gives Novak a chance to advance to second base with two outs. So a man in scoring position for the Red Hawks, David Novak, no relation, up at the plate. Ryan Novak on second. I mean, for Zarlingo there, that was a very productive out. You advance the runner, but you know, third straight inning with runners in scoring position. With two outs. With two outs. Yep. Third tries the charm, you know. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, you gotta be lucky. That's right. And the Red Hawks be lucky here. First pitch is bounced in by Waters, 77 miles per hour off speed, right in the I wanna keep saying the dirt the dirt, but it's it's actually it's turf, turf for those who may be listening for the first time here. The field here is all turf. Even the even the infield. It's a really pretty baseball field. Absolutely. So. Easy to manage for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's always interesting to hear the arguments between turf and, you know, regular dirt. Obviously, the, the, the regular grass and regular infield dirt is a lot more, need a lot, is a lot more time consuming to take care of, but you can't beat it. It's a tradition. You got to keep That's right. the dirt and grass alive. The West Wiping Coast off especially. It yeah. feels like there's so many more grass and dirt and out on the East Coast, a lot more turf. 
kind of interesting. Four pitch walk issued there to David Novak. So two Novaks on base. Ryan at second, David at first. It's Trey Keels coming off a fantastic inning of fielding. A fantastic <laughs> top half of the inning of fielding. Including a double play on a pop fly. He threw it to first base after Danny Westenfeld was already about halfway around second with one out. Nonetheless, steps into the batter's box here with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Miami trailing 3 nothing. As he fouls the first pitch back to the screen. We saw Keels in his last at bat swing and miss three different times to strike out after his first at bat where he got a hit. Those ones were pretty much all medium 80s. They were yeah, they were not ones, fast. They were not much velocity, but as Keels looks at that one in for strike two. Waters quickly head 0-2 here with two outs, 85 mile per hour. Pitch on that last one. He's got bases full of Novaks here. That's right. Got to cash in. Waters sitting at 112 pitches coming into this at bat as he bounces that one in for ball one. Again, uh, the, the third starting pitcher for these Chippewas that has gone over 100 pitches. And there has not been, there. there is action in the bullpen, of course, for Central Michigan. It'll be a righty in the bullpen, but nonetheless, manager Jake Sable has really, really trusted his starters this weekend. As Keel swings and misses at that one to end the fifth inning. Another strikeout for Keels, two on the day. And with two Novaks on base, nothing doing for the Red Hawks in the bottom of the fifth as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Chippewas coming up to bat. They lead 3 nothing. It's 6-3 to three in favor of the visitors. You are listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Please stay with us. Spencer Verberg up at the plate for the visiting Chippewas for the top of the sixth inning. Nick Vardavis still on the mound. Pitch count sitting at 74. So he gets a swing and miss there, 85 miles per hour on the first pitch of this inning. Vardavis allowed six hits so far, three runs, two earned, two walks, and two strikeouts for the lefty. Lefty wearing number 13. So that one is grounded over the head of the third base coach, but foul. Herber coming into the day, only played in six games this season, started two, eight at bats, and did not register a hit. He has not registered a hit today either. Yeah, Herber, he doesn't get a ton of playing time, but he's been good defensively, good catcher right behind Stengren. That one is bounced in front of home plate and bounces over the catcher, David Novak, and over to the screen. The count moves to one and two. Sun back out here. We were talking about how uh, oh it's been pretty off and on today, so. Hopefully it stays. We're perpetually in the shade, of course, but <laughs> the sun is on the field and in the stands. Good crowd today. 
Oh yeah, and definitely. Yesterday yes. was a good crowd as well. It was probably 80-20 or 85-15 Miami yeah. to Central fans. Can't see the Central fans, but Red Hawk faithful showed up. Yeah, I believe yesterday's attendance was around 310. It was 310 yesterday. And for Miami baseball, these stands can't fill a lot, but they filled a lot yesterday. It was a great showing and a great showing today as well. Vardavis deals here. Swing and miss for strike three. It's Vardavis' third strike out of the day for the first out of the inning here in the top of the sixth. For Vardavis as well, it feels like all of his strikeouts have been off-speed pitch. Just kind of find that right pitch, and he's really fooled all three of these Central Michigan pitchers. He's pitched well. Just got to keep him quiet. Drew Loikitz up at the plate here. Second baseman batting 77. <laughs> 0 0.077 batting average so far this season. One for two on the day, though. Lucky it's early in the season. You got plenty of time left to yep. change it around. After a first pitch ball, I think it's gets a piece of that one towards the bottom of the zone. Moves count to even one and one with one out here in Oxford. Been a fun weekend of baseball. Oh two yeah. wins for Miami for those who are not privy to that. They are, they do have the series win locked up, but are looking to get the sweep and to even their MAC record at three and three as they lost last weekend in a sweep to Bowling Green at State University. A weekend full of interesting games. You had a, a oh, yeah. four four and a half hour game on Friday with a, an hour and a half rain delay as that one's chopped to the Ryland Zaborowski at third. He fires over to first for the second out of the inning. Yeah, that that weekend was don't want to say forgettable because the Red Hawks erased a they, they erased a 10-1 deficit, deficit. Yeah, deficit, yep. But, ended up um, taking the lead after that. As the right as the wind keeps going, but yeah, tough weekend for the Red Hawks, and you know they all it takes is one week and they flip the script and they can move to eight and nine. Entering this weekend, they were. Six and nine, so really good weekend here at home. Yeah, Bowling Green, sorry, sorry, Andrew, but I just want to add on to that. Bowling Green, that second match, uh, the second game on that Saturday was not a banner day for the Red Hawks offense. Some fantastic pitching by the Bowling Green starter, Nick Good. He was... He was good. <laughs> he was very good, actually. <laughs> but yeah, the the Friday and Sunday games was filled with offense. Just been kind of a, I believe, a, a theme this year so far for the Red Hawks. Been kind of two games on for the offense, and then one game kind of off. It's 0-2 here with two outs. Part of his deals high for ball one. To Jake Brill, the Chippewas. Center fielder. Brill one for two on the day with an RBI. As he watches that one in, 73 miles per hour, but nothing doing there as the count moves even. Two and two with two outs on number 24. How huge would a one, two, three, six be for this Red Hawks side? Just want to get outs and get back to work at the plate. Brill fouls that one away. Keep the count even here. Yeah, not a lot of no action as far as we can see in the Miami bullpen, so potentially Vardavis coming out for the next inning as well. We'll have to see how he does here as he deals, and that one is fouled high but out of play over the Central Michigan dugout. But we will s probably see a new Central Michigan pitcher yep. in the next inning as there was action in that bullpen. And Evan Waters, after a after a good day, only allowing three hits, no runs. Gave up six walks, though. Yep, That's six walks. One. Yep. Jake Brill spits on that one, 75 mile per hour on the inside. Moves the count full, 3-2, two, two outs, top of the sixth inning, no runners on. Second baseman Tyler Gordon playing 
in the very shallow outfield. Same thing with shortstop Dylan Baker. As Vardavis deals, that one's low. And now they have a runner on with a walk to Jake Brill, number 24 for Central Michigan. Now we get to the number nine hitter, Eli Stewart, one for two on the day. Wearing number five. Now there is some action in the Miami bullpen. Looks like that is Carson Byers up the lefty. Lefty sophomore. He's been good this season for the Red Hawks. He's been throwing some fire, you know. He doesn't stand as the biggest pitcher, but don't underestimate him. He's got some gas. This we'll say even with the velocity, the movement yeah. on his on his it's off speed awesome. stuff is fantastic cuz Take a break. The Red Hawk fans in attendance serenading Eli Stewart and his third base coach with the Jeopardy theme song, <laughs> waiting for them to get done with their meeting. Heading into this at bat. This will probably be Vardavis's last batter, Eli Stewart. So he checks on the runner at first. Close play, but he is safe. Yeah, Vardavis moved from low 80s to 92 pitches coming into this at bat. And you have to think with all of the pickoff attempts that he had earlier in this game, his arms starting to wear down. But you've gotten length out of your starter. Yesterday you did not. If you were manager Brian Smiley, Landon Looper yesterday only went one inning. Ended up loading the bases in at the top of the second. And was eventually pulled. But two out of the three days having good Good place from your starter, Patrick Mastry, and starting on Friday, pitching well, walking again, walking a little bit too many batters, but still having a lot of good strikeout stuff. And then obviously Peyton Olenek coming in, pitching four innings, striking out 10, as Stewart blasts that one out to left field. Zarlingo is there, but he's not able to make the, gra the diving grab as a runner's going, coming around third. Play at the wall is made, and a double for Eli Stewart, brings home a run to give the Chippewas a 4-0 lead in the top of the sixth. What a beautiful swing there from Eli Stewart. He just unloaded on that one, hammered that one out all the way, pretty much to the wall. Luckily for them, the Red Hawks, they got a skilled outfielder in Zach McDonald. But yeah, McDonald man. covering for Zarlingo there after that dive. Eli Stewart, UC Riverside transfer a few years ago from Long Beach, California, making his presence known, and CMU up by four, pretty comfortable lead now. Yeah, and it looks like pitching coach Larry Scully is coming out. Could be it for Vardavis. Yep. Like you said, Andrew, it was probably his last batter as the order turns over for CMU. No signal yet to the bullpen as of now as we wait. Looks like... He will go to the bullpen. Carson Byers will be coming on for the Red Hawks as Nick Vardavis' day comes to a close here in Oxford. He ends the day. He pitched 94 innings, five and two thirds, 94 pitches, five and two thirds innings, three earned runs, four runs allowed. Seven hits, three walks, three strikeouts, three doubles, and one hit by pitch as the sophomore lefty Carson Byers is going to come in for the Red Hawks in the top of the sixth inning with the Central Michigan lineup turning over. We will take a break as Byers warms up. So we will catch you back here in just a few moments in the top of the sixth inning. Two outs on the Chippewas here. We will be back. You are listening to... Miami Red Hawks baseball here on Red Hawk Radio. Stay with us.
St. Patrick's Day Baseball here on Red Hawk Radio, Miami Red Hawks. Central Michigan Chippewas as we are in the top of the sixth inning. New pitcher for the Red Hawks, Carson Byers, the lefty sophomore. So he will face the top of the Chippewas order. Starting with Bryson Webb. Webb currently sitting at one for three on the day with an RBI. Man on second base. That is Eli Stewart after an RBI double. Byers, fastball hovers in the high 80s with a lot of movement on his off-speed stuff. Slider, curveball are very, very good. Very, very solid movement on all of them. And yesterday we saw a lot of velocity with these Miami pitchers. Today has been a lot more about deception and trying to get swings on off-speed pitches. For Byers as well, back-to-back -back outings with three strikeouts. He's... Got a lot of heat and trying to quiet down these CMU bats as they've kind of erupted for a little run here. Yeah, Byers on the season, 11 innings pitched, 12 hits allowed, 14 strikeouts, 10.64 ERA. He throws that in for a strike on 3-0. and 3-1 and one here is the count with two outs. Like you said, CMU has seven hits today so far. First of their runs coming in the third, two in the fourth, and one in this sixth inning. Byers deals a second strike to Webb to make the count full. Three, two, two outs. A big out necessary here as the Chippewas have a runner in scoring position. Byers looks back and deals full count. Webb shoots that one high, Zaborowski. Shielding his eyes and makes the grab for the final out of the inning. So Byers comes in relief for Nick Vardavis as his day ends after an RBI double. Chippewas get, an, get a run in the inning, but Byers able to limit the damage with the runner on second. Still, Chippewas lead 4-0 here going into the bottom of the sixth. They lead the hits battle 7-3 as well. We will be back in a few moments with the Miami Bats. You are listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Back here in Oxford, Ohio, Central Michigan University leading these Miami Red Hawks 4-0 here. As we get a new pitcher on the mound for the Chippewas as well as a defensive change at second base. Jack Eichler coming in for Drew Loikitz, the senior, senior righty. Eichler has been very good for Central Michigan this year. New pitcher on the mound is number 49, Jared Hansen, standing at 6'3", 205 pounds. He's a redshirt freshman. 
not play in 2023. Pitched in four games so far this season. His best two coming in his first outing where he pitched against Stephen F. Austin in a win. Three innings pitched, four hits allowed, only one run. He's had two strikeouts as well. Pitched against Oklahoma State on March 1st, Oral Roberts on March 5th, and then Kent State on March 9th. His worst outing against Oral Roberts came with five earned runs. As Tyler Gordon shoots that one up to center field, and that'll be a base hit to start the bottom of the sixth inning for the Red Hawks. So one batter faced, one hit against. That's just what the doctor ordered here for the Red Hawks. They desperately need some base hits in. Way to do it, do it against the new pitcher in Jared Hansen, Tyler Gordon, Vanguard University transfer in Costa Mesa, making his impact here in the bottom half and the lineup flips over. Huge opportunity once again here for the Red Hawks. The defensive change at second base for the Chippewas was Jack Eichler in for Drew Loikitz. Eichler, 5'10", grad student from Verona, New Jersey. Went to high school at Seton Hall Prep. Previous school was St. Peter's transfer in. That one is shot sky high into center f to left field by Ty Batisich, center fielder coming over to get it. That's Jake Brill for the first out of the inning. I had to mention Seton Hall Prep there. Got some uh, some family up in New Jersey listening today. Zach McDonald up to the plate for the Red Hawks. McDonald, two walks on the day. As he smokes that one to center field. Brill going back, going back, makes the catch at the track. He hauls that one in for the second out of the inning. So another great contact piece of hitting for the Red Hawks, but nothing doing again. These Chippewas outfielders have been very, very good at getting to balls hit no matter where they are hit. As Ryland Zaborowski steps up to the plate, 0 for 2 today with a walk and one strikeout against Jared Hansen. That first pitch strike at 79 miles per hour off speed. And even in these outs here for the Red Hawk bats, they've been good contact, just not far enough. The wind also could be playing a factor. I don't know which way it's really blowing. Blowing to the right a little bit, left to right. So you can see that American flag right out in center field. Really blowing now. You just hope one of these swings, the Wind pushes it out for the Red Hawks. Got to get some luck. You kind of saw that with the McDonald hit as well. I mean, you saw yeah. Brill go back, and then he had to move a little bit to his right. So the wind definitely affecting the ball, just not going towards the fence, instead <laughs> moving to the right. It's hard to track. Yeah. Got to feel for these defenders at some point. It happened yesterday as well. I mean, a couple of the Miami runs were scored. As Zabrowski swings and misses, and a quick throw down to first. Nothing doing, but... Wanted to check on the runner, Gordon. Yeah, we saw Donahue in right field yesterday make a, had the ball fly over his head just because the wind was, you know, moving in that so direction. Fast. Yeah, and there's Miami were able to score some runs off of that. 2-2 here on Zaborowski. Hanson on the mound. He deals. Zaborowski swings and misses to end the bottom of the sixth inning. So one hit allowed on the first batter that Hanson sees, but nothing doing again as Miami puts a man on base, but strands him. A couple hard hit balls, but they all were caught. And then a strikeout from Zaborowski, his second on the day to end the inning. As we head to the back half of this game, at the top of the seventh inning coming up here. Carson Byers back on the mound for the Red Hawks. As you are listening to Miami Red Hawks baseball on Red Hawk Radio, stay with us.
Welcome back to Miami Baseball here on Red Hawk Radio. Jacob Donahue leading things off for the visiting Central Michigan Chippewas. Carson Byers back on the mound. As he looks at a 4 nothing deficit. CMU leads the hits battle 7-4. to four. As Jared Hansen came in relief for Evan Waters. Saw his first batter and gave up a hit, but nothing doing. Again, the Red Hawks stranding another base runner. Spires throws that one in for second strike of the at bat. 0 and 2 quickly. So a lot of late movement there on that pitch. So it looked like it was going inside. Donahue tried to get out of the way, but ended up going back towards the plate. As Byers deals, and that one is popped sky high by Donahue. Byers going to field it as the pitcher, and there we go. First out of the inning, made by Byers himself. Goes into the pitchers are athletes column. Fantastic pop fly. He, he, he called he called his catcher off on that one. That's that's not something you normally see, but he was ready for it. And that's good recognition there from Byers. Just making making the play. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Pitchers are athletes. Pitchers are athletes. Might be one of my favorite online things ever. <laughs> Just clipping those different plays for pitchers that are absolutely absurd. Nonetheless, one out here in at the top of the seventh inning. Danny Westenfeld up to the plate as he smokes that one into center field. High pop fly, Zach McDonald under it, and he makes the routine grab on that fly ball. Two quick outs here for Carson Byers. It's the cleanup hitter, Mikey Murphy. The freshman steps into the batter's box to try and give his team something here in the top of the seventh as they hold a 4 nothing lead. No shifts anywhere in the field. No outfield shifts as Murphy swings and misses at the first offering. We're close to the eighth inning and it's only two hours. This game is this game has been flying by for sure. I mean, <laughs> even the really Friday fast. game flew by as well. I mean, Miami didn't get anything going until the bottom of the ninth. But yeah, like you said, this game has definitely been flying by. As Murphy fouled away the 89 mile per hour fastball from Byers. 0 and 2 quickly here again. 0 and 2, two outs. Byers comes set and deals, and Murphy fouls that one away again. We will do it all over. This is the part of the game really in the seventh, eighth, and ninth frames where you gotta play your best. You know, and they you have love they to did play yesterday. your best. But yeah, this is where you really gotta do it. That one is high for ball one, contrary to what the fan in the in the in the audience said. It is not a strikeout, it was ball one. Got a lot of wasn't particularly close either. <laughs> yeah, Gonna say we got a lot of amateur umpires <laughs> in the stands today. As always, as always. Byers throws that one, a swing and a miss, and that'll end the top of the seventh inning. So one pitch too late for the strikeout call, but nonetheless, it did come. Byers adds that one to his line to end the top of the seventh inning. As we stretch here in Oxford, Ohio, the Miami Bats coming back up, looking for any sort of offense, trying to get runners on base and it convert.
we have stretched officially here in Oxford, Ohio. McKee Field at Hayden Park, wind picking up. <laughs> Clouds are coming in, but still a beautiful day for baseball. Jared Hansen back on the mound, the red shirt freshman for Central Michigan. Ryan Novak at the plate, freshman on freshman. Novak got a hit in his last at bat in the fifth inning. He watches the first pitch ball at 85 miles per hour. He smokes that one. High to center field. Not a lot of movement for Brill, and he makes the grab for the first out of the inning. Again, another aggressive play by Novak on f one of the first few pitches he's seen. He's been doing that a lot today. We saw him you know, pop out on the first pitch earlier, and not in last at bat, but the at bat before. The shortstop Dylan Baker steps up to the plate, 0 for 2 today. Yeah, Red Hawks are now down to their final eight outs here. You still got time to work, but this game gets a lot shorter. So, got to work some counts and can't do it like that. Pop fly out to right field now. Jacob Donahue gets under it for the second out of the inning and you know, after allowing a, f a hit to the first battery seed, he saw Jared Hansen has, has made short work of these Red Hawks hitters. You know, second batter in a row where he's seen two pitches and then just popped one up into, into the outfield. Anthony Zarlingo up at the plate for the Red Hawks. The switch hitting now batting from the left side. He watches a 75 mile per hour curveball in for a strike. 0 oh, 1. With two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Appreciate you having us. Wherever you're listening from, whether it's on the road or New Jersey or anywhere else, glad to have you with us. Red Hawks could be going down quickly here in the seventh. It's not encouraging. Yeah, 0 2 count here on Zarlingo. Payoff pitch, and that's strike three called. 79 mile per hour off speed. It gets Zarlingo looking. And a quick 1 2 3 inning for Jared Hansen, making quick work of these Red Hawks. Moving into the top of the eighth. The Chippewas still leading 4 0. You are listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Stay with us. We are back for the top of the eighth inning. Miami Red Hawks versus the Central Michigan University Chippewas. 4-0 Chippewas lead. Scoreboard for the Chippewas, 4-7-0. For the Red Hawks, 0-4-1. Carson Byers on the mound for the Red Hawks again. And up to the plate is number 36, the designated hitter, Drew Stengren. Stengren 0 for 3 on the day. As he 
Fouls that one away, evens the count one and one. Byers pitching well so far today. He's been he's been strong. He's looked strong. Dialing up that fastball while using some a good mix of off speed. And it's gonna have a pitcher like Byers with a burst of energy right out of the bullpen. Just come out with some fire and he's ahead again. Yep, there's that fastball swing and miss there by Stengren. 89 miles per hour right down Main Street. Byers deals way outside, the even the count, two and two, 70 mile, 75 mile per hour pitch there, but in the other batter's box. Easy one to take there if you're Stengren. Yeah, and another great play there from Novak. You know, his bat certainly isn't hot right now, but he's a He's been consistent defender. behind the plate, yep. Stengren looks at the third ball of the at-bat, moves the count three and two, hits 90 on that fastball down low. Stengren batting 213 on the year. Four runs scored by himself. No homers and four RBIs. Byers deals, and that one's fouled back to the screen. And we'll do it again. Another 89 mile per hour offering there from Byers. For a guy like Stengren here, you know, the numbers aren't what you want. But this is how you get more playing time. Just you got to show fight in the batter's box, and he's really he's doing, doing that right here. Byers deals inside, and that's ball four. I think Byers might have wanted that one, but Stengren sold it. And now the Chippewas have a man on first with no outs here in the top of the eighth inning, looking to add to their lead. That, that call was very close. It could have gone either way. The home umpire decided to shift it CMU's way. Very borderline, though. And for Byers, you can't be mad at that pitch. You know, no, you, I mean it, you, you, you throw you that every time. Stepping into the box, Spencer Verberg, 0 for 2 on the day. The catcher for these Chippewas. Also interesting to see this top half of this CMU lineup. It's kind of been relatively quiet. Only one run scored. It's really been the bottom half. Loikitz, Brill, Stewart, all those guys with some positive base production. And it's coming up next, so Byers got to do his job. Shows bunt. Zaborowski fields. He throws to first. He's out. Play to second. Tag is not in time as he is safe, but the out was made at first. So the sacrifice bunt does work. From Spencer Verberg, he's able to move the runner over to second. Quick play over to second there from Novak, trying to get the out, but no, no luck. Yeah, and that's just another phenomenal thing from David Novak. He's an experienced catcher. He's got a rocket of an arm. He can throw out runners left and right and just completely under pressure, and he makes the play. That's awesome for the Red Hawks. Jack Eichler up for his first at bat of the game after coming in defensively for Drew Loikitz at second base. Eichler hitting 317, one run scored, zero home runs, and nine RBIs for the senior infielder. Wearing number 22. He smokes that one into center field. McDonald getting under it. Doesn't have to move very much. Runner tags from second. McDonald fires in. Baker cuts it off, but the runner advances to third base on the fly out from Eichler. Eichler hitting in the seventh spot. Now it's the eighth hitter, the center fielder, Jake Brill. Brill one for two on the day with an RBI and a walk. Another really good chance here with two outs. You know, four nothing lead, it's good. But if you can make it five, you can really make it tough here for the Red Hawks. Yeah, it feels there's a different vibe to this game than there was the last couple. Was, yes. You know, even though the Red Hawks did go down early, hasn't felt as 
possible today. Yeah. And maybe that's just us from up here. Obviously, if you're in the Red Hawks dugout, you feel differently. Anything is possible with even with just six outs remaining. But nonetheless, you got to get it going here. Time is running out. As Brill turns to bunt, but the ball gets away, and the runner comes home to score. Byers threw an 87-mile-per-hour pitch. Novak wasn't able to corral it on the bunt attempt from Brill. Ball got by him, hit the backstop, and there was no time for Novak. The runner came home to score, and like you said, Andrew, add to this lead, 5-0 makes it much harder for these Red Hawks. And that really takes away the grand slam possibility if you yeah, that's a, that's a able to get it. It would be 4-4, but... Stake to the chest right there. Yep. And pretty much all day long, the Red Hawks have they've had chances, but unlike yesterday, they have not been able to put a run in the scoring column. And that's uncommon because really the entire year, the Red Hawks have put up runs in bunches. Not today, though. Yeah, it feels as if just kind of shooting themselves in the foot as of now, not able to take advantage of the, of the opportunities they've had. If you're just joining us, Red Hawks down 5 nothing. had two opportunities with the bases loaded. Multiple times the bases were loaded during this game, and the Red Hawks were not able to cash in. With zero runs on the board, you have to think those are some pretty big opportunities. And they're going to be looking at those after this game ends, no matter the result, to see what they can do better. You wish you honestly could have saved some runs from yesterday for today. Yeah. You put up 15 yesterday. 15, and yeah. Maybe five or six. You're up 6 5, but not today. Brand new day. Count one and two here on Brill. Byers fires, and that one's fouled back to the screen. Another 89 mile per hour pitch. This one closer to the strike zone than the, the one that got away from catcher David Novak. Some movement in the Miami bullpen. So Larry Scully's going to have a chat here. It's looks like that will end Byers' day here in Oxford. As Larry Scully comes out to talk to his sophomore reliever and take the ball. As Byers pitched a, a decent day, no hits allowed, but had one earned run, a walk and a strikeout as we will get a new pitcher here for the Red Hawks. It's going to be Ryan Zimmer, the senior righty, taking the mound for Miami. We will come back after his warm-up is done. Red Hawks losing 5-0 here to the Central Michigan Chippewas. You are listening to Miami Baseball here on Red Hawk Radio. Stay with us. Carson Byers' day is done. On the mound now, the senior righty, Ryan Zimmer. Last time out, pitched only one out. It was a rough outing against Oakland here in Oxford. Only had that one out, allowed one hit, four earned runs, and had three walks. It was a rainy day against Oakland, and 
when he was pitching, I should say, against Oakland, and that we believe is we believed was part of the reason why he struggled a lot with walks. And you know, Zimmer, we've seen two guys today for the Red Hawks who have been really not high in the velocity. Well, Zimmer is high in the velocity. First pitch registering at 93 miles an hour. Currently sitting with a total of 2.1 innings pitched, two innings, two and a third innings of work, five hits allowed, two strikeouts, and a uh, not so representative of his work, 34.71 ERA. <laughs> Zimmer deals the 2-2 to Jake Brill. He fouls that one away, kind of just swiped at it, sent it out of play. See what Zimmer decides to go with here. Like you mentioned, he's got a ton of speed. 2-2 two -two here, outside at 95 miles an hour. And I've, we have yet to talk about this just because of the, the stature of the pitchers that we've seen today. Carson Byers being one of the, the shortest on this Miami roster. But this Miami pitching staff is very large. Mm -hmm. Zimmer standing. At least 6'3", as that one is popped over towards the third base line. Zaborowski tries to reach out for it, but it's just a little bit too far into the Miami bullpen. Maybe if Zaborowski was three or four inches taller, you probably could have gotten it. <laughs> Just ridiculous though, 6'5". Yeah, he's Zimmer's 6'5". Yeah. From St. Clair, Michigan. He is Great. he is a big man, and he's not even the tallest on the staff. Nope. Saw on the Friday game, Peyton Olenek come in at six foot 11, junior transfer from Oklahoma. And boy, can he throw the ball. He is tall and he can work. I mean, men's, ba men's basketball team could really use a guy <laughs> like Olenek, part-time player. Three, two, Called strike three, sorry, s swinging strike three for Jake Brill for Zimmer's first strikeout of the afternoon after coming in relief for Carson Byers. So a run comes in to score on a wild pitch to give the Chippewas a 5 nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Miami Redhawks have six outs to do any sort of damage as this game is slowly coming to a close. You're listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Stay with us. Six outs remaining here for the Red Hawks, down five nothing at home, looking for the series sweep after winning the first two games Friday on a walk off three to two win by the batter that is up right now, David Novak, the catcher for these Red Hawks. Yesterday was a big win. Red Hawks put up 15 runs, 20 hits. Fantastic offensive showing, but like you said earlier, Andrew, you'd probably like to see some of those runs transfer for today. There's not a lot doing here for this Miami offense. Red Hawks only four hits. You know, it feels like you should have a few more here and there. This CMU defense has been so good, but we've also had base runners as well. Six walks and haven't come up with anything. Left a ton of base runners on. As David Novak shoots that one in the gap in right center field, that'll get down for a base hit. His first base hit of the day. And his first at bat that registers for today as he had two walks coming in to that appearance. So a man on base again. This is where you'd like to see the Red Hawks try and get something to go here. So we've got a pinch hitter, Evan Applewick. 
who we saw earlier in this series play first base for these Red Hawks in the Friday game. Yeah, and Applewick, this is a guy who led the team in walks last year. He is such an on-base machine here for Miami. This is exactly the guy you want. You can get on here. It could be two on, no outs for your nine hitter who's been good today, Tyler Gordon. If he takes a first pitch strike on the outer half. And getting a little bit ahead here, I believe we're gonna have two pinch hitters. Justin Gorski, the freshman, is in the on deck circle, so to speak. More just standing, standing near the dugout. As that ball gets away, the runner's gonna advance from first. David Novak moves in to scoring position. On that 72 mile per hour off speed that just got away from the catcher Verberg. Applewick coming into today, hitting 160, five runs, two homers, five RBIs. As he pops that one over to foul territory. A diving play by the second second baseman. Not able to do that. That was Eichler trying to make the catch, and Weston felled the first baseman trying to see if he can catch it over his head, but was not able to do that as Eichler called him off, but couldn't make the diving catch in foul territory over on the right side. And for a guy who he hit 233 last year, not a ton of pop, not a ton of power. He has two homers on the year. It kind of is impressive. Uh, he just found the right swing at the right time, and a guy who has sneaky pop in your right spot, you, you're definitely fortunate if you're a Miami fan. Hanson deals low to even the count at two and two. Hanson back on the mound after a very, very quick last inning. Only allowed two hits today. One to the first batter he saw. He's two strikeouts, no runs, and no walks. Two and two on Applewick is dealt low and away. Make the count full. For Applewick right, right here, this is a guy who's not gonna bite at the outside stuff. He is stone cold. He is very patient. That's what makes him just such a tough out. Applewick sees that one on the outside and takes the walk. So once again, Miami has two runners on and now with no outs in this bottom of the eighth inning. Pinch hitter Justin Gorski is coming up to the plate as there will be a meeting on the mound between the infield and the pitcher, Hanson. There is some action in the Chippewas bullpen. Two righties are up as the pitching coach. Hilt comes out to the mound, likely just to inform Hanson about what he's gonna see here from Gorski. Gorski this weekend started the rally on Friday with a stand-up triple. Fantastic hit out to right field and off the wall. He was moving. Yeah, and a similar situation here, you know, obviously in the later stages, we're in the eighth. No outs, so got some room to maneuver here. But for Justin Gorski, just got to be patient. Nothing up the middle because that could be a double play and yep. pretty much end the scoring threat. But for now, two on, no outs. Huge opportunity for Justin Gorski, the freshman, to hopefully start a Red Hawks comeback here on Sunday. Gorski hitting in front of Batisic, the number one hitter in this Red Hawks lineup. He doesn't bite on that outside pitch. To get ahead in the count, 1-0. Runners on second and first. Got David Novak on second. And Evan Applewick after working a walk on first as Gorski pops that one high in the air out to right field. Donahue going back, 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 back at the wall. He makes the catch. Both runners tag. As Donahue fields that one and gets it in. So a sacrifice fly out to get the runners advanced into scoring position. Both runners into scoring position. We'll go into the score. We'll go into the score box just as a flyout, but an effective flyout for sure. If you're Gorski, yeah, and 
That one was absolutely drilled off of the bat yeah. of Gorski. He that hit that one. one. If it was just a little bit harder and not as high, it would have probably gone out of here. Maybe if he timed that one up a little bit better, but still a productive out. And wonder how high that one went. That one probably went 250, 300 feet. That one was really sky high, yeah. right to the wall. But top of the lineup here for Miami. This is where you want them. You got the Chippewas right where you want them. Batisich watches a first pitch strike. One out here in the bottom of the eighth. Batisich one for three on the day with a walk. And like you said, Andrew, top of the lineup here. They've been very good today, so it's what you need to see. It's a good all season as well. Batisich gets a little bit of a piece of that one, but goes straight into the glove for strike two. And boy, he was hacking away at that one. That was a pitch he wanted to see. You can get on here for Zach McDonald with one out. This could be a whole new ball game. Hanson deals that one low, bounces in. Good stop by the catcher Verberg to prevent that one from going behind him and away. First ball of the at-bat as Hanson takes a look at his wrist. Comes set and deals. Batisic watches that one in. Another close, close call, but nonetheless, a ball. Two and two, even count with one out here in Oxford. An interesting game still, as Miami does have the potential to come back, but you need to convert here with two runners on. Hanson deals outside, off speed, 75 mile per hour curveball. And some good plate discipline from Batisic moves the count full. No room to put him here for Batisic. Just got to try and find a zone if you're Hansen. Batisic grounds that one to third. Runners coming home, so Miami will get a run. Play at first is made for the second out of the inning. Novak comes across the score to give Miami their first run of the game. Applewick stays at second. With Zach McDonald coming up to the plate. So Andrew, one run. It's something. Yep, definitely is. But still not enough. It doesn't feel like enough, at least from up here, and, and they know it's not enough down there. Yeah, and you know, the Red Hawks, they're great with two outs. They scored a ton yesterday, and even though they scored, you gotta feel fortunate if you're a CMU fan. There's only four more outs left in the game. Although you give up the run, you can't keep them scoreless. It's 5-1 with two outs in. Yeah, feels like the CMU's really on top of this one. McDonald shoots that one high into right center field. Donahue going back, back at the wall. He makes the, he does not make the grab. He drops it. Applewick coming across to score. McDonald coming to third, and he will stop with a stand-up triple. Wonder if they score that an error on Donahue because he had it in his glove and ended up dropping it at the wall. Second run comes across. Does not look like it will be scored as an error. Ooh. So McDonald. That's surprising. Yeah, that, that, that is a little bit surprising for sure. That one was one of many outs shot pretty much all the way to the wall and just unfortunate for CMU. Burrell was there. Mc, Matt Borowski, sorry, shoots that one high into center field. But Brill is under it to end the inning. So. Miami gets two runs to come across the plate, and they are now down three, which they were down three on Friday going into the ninth inning. So we will see what the pitching can do as we move into the final frame here in Oxford. You are listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hog Radio. Stay with us.
Top of the ninth inning here in Oxford. Chippewas still lead 5-2, to two, but Miami were able to get two runs across in the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher on the mound for Miami. It is Nick DeMonica. The lefty who's last out last time out pitched an inning in two thirds, only allowed two hits against BGSU, and one earned run, two strikeouts. After a strong eleven pitches for Ryan Zimmer in relief for Carson Byers last inning. Up at the plate is number five for the Chippewas, that is the third baseman, Eli Stewart. As he grounds that one to the Red Hawks. Third baseman, Zaborowski. He fires across the diamond to first and gets the first out of the inning. So with the pinch hitters in the, dot, the bottom of the eighth, excuse me, we have some defensive changes. Ryan Novak moves to right field from first base. Justin Gorski takes over for Tyler Gordon at second. And Evan Applewick takes over as Novak moves out. He takes over at first base. Bunt attempt here by Bryson Webb back up to the top of the order. So that means that Trey Keels is out of right field and Tyler Gordon, as I mentioned, is also out, taken over by Justin Gorski, the freshman. DeMonica on the season, eight innings pitched, 13 hits allowed, six strikeouts and a nine ERA. Another one of those guys in the back half of your bullpen for Brian Smiley who comes out with a lot of energy. You're just hoping it's good energy against these CMU hitters. Yeah, and he's another guy that is all about deception, mm. not as much velocity and overpowering the hitter. We've seen a couple curveballs in this at bat that have been really interesting in terms of movement. As he deals that one, strike three called. Fantastic fastball there, 87 miles per hour right down the pipe for the second out of the inning. DeMonica set him up with two mid-70s curveballs and then struck him out looking for his first of the game. That's now second day in a row where all Red Hawk pitchers have gotten a strikeout. DeMonica, Zimmer, Byers, and Vardavis all in the K column. DeMonica with a first pitch off speed pitch to Jacob Donahue, player who dropped the ball in the outfield mm. from Zach McDonald. Thought it might have been an error, but it was registered as a hit. Nonetheless, brought a runner across. It was weird because it wasn't ruled as an error. You don't usually see that. Yeah, he had it in his glove and just ended up dropping it. Not sure if he ran into the wall that made it happen or anything like that, but. Nonetheless, it was still a good play as DeMonica is up 0-2 in this count early. Good off-speed pitch as he deals to Donahue. Fastball fouled back to the backstop. 90 miles per hour on that fastball. The way it looked, it didn't even seem like he got a piece of that. I guess he did at the very last moment, but had some serious hit on it. you got to love what you're seeing here from Nick DeMonica. Yeah, Donahue two for four on the day, so been one of their best hitters as DeMonica deals an off-speed that bounces to the catcher Novak for the first ball of the at-bat. Miami almost caught up in the hits. Chip was still leading seven to six. As DeMonica in this one-two count with two outs deals. And Donahue smokes that out to center field. McDonald going back, but he will get under it for the third and final out of the ninth, the top of the ninth inning. So the Red Hawks have one more chance down three runs heading into the bottom of the ninth, reminiscent of Friday's game. We will see what they can do as the middle of the order is coming up for the Red Hawks. 5-2 is your score here in Oxford. We will see you back for the back half of the ninth inning. Stay with us here on Red Hawk Radio.
no better song to start a comeback than Eye of the Tiger from Rocky. As we head into the bottom of the ninth inning, Red Hawks down three runs, losing the hit battle seven to six, but looking for a spark on offense. Ryan Novak up to the plate, one for four on the day. No walks for him. Same pitcher back on the mound for the Chippewas. It's Jared Hansen as he deals the first pitch outside for ball one. Not seeing a lot of rally caps here in the stands, but I guess it's cold out. People aren't worried about that as of now. Some rally hoods. Some rally hoods, that's exactly right. Novak looks at the second ball of the at-bat. Another off speed for Hansen at 84, excuse me. Some fans behind home plate really jumping around and trying to make sure that Hansen is distracted as best as possible. As he deals that one to make it 3-0 and here. Seems to be working, three straight balls to start out. And Novak, I mean, we talked about it earlier, he's been very aggressive against these Chippewas pitchers, swinging very early, but he has not swung at all this at bat, and it's 3-0. And here's the pitch inside for a four pitch walk, and the Red Hawks have their first base runner. Dylan Baker now up to the plate, 0 for 3 on the day. But if there's a guy that you would like to have, Dylan Baker is one of them. As he has hit very well this season. 308 average, 16 runs scored, only one home run. 12 RBIs as there is going to be a pitching change for the Chippewas here as this four pitch walk was good enough for manager Jake Sable. So when we come back, we will give you details on the closer for Central Michigan University. CMU still leading 5-2 in the bottom of the ninth. Ryan Novak with a four pitch walk, so he will be on first base. You are listening to Miami Baseball on Red Hawk Radio. Stay with us. New pitcher on the mound for the Chippewas. It is Bryce Helgeth, the graduate student righty from Arlington Heights, Illinois, 6'2", 225 pounds, and notably known for being the pitcher that was on the mound on Friday when the Red Hawks came back from down three and ended up walking it off. Dylan Baker still up. Ryan Novak on first after a four-pitch walk. And things are getting interesting. Helgeth deals inside, is now one and one, 94 miles per hour on that pitch. Helgeth pitched 10 and two thirds innings, 11 hits allowed, 12 strikeouts and a 5-9-1 ERA. Deals that one outside. Now Baker is ahead in the count, two and one. Yeah, 
there's a guy who wants to shut down these Red Hawk bats, it's Helgeth. He wants to get revenge after surrendering three straight runs. As that one hits Baker, and he will take his base. So the tying run comes up to the plate for the Red Hawks. It is Anthony Zarlingo, the sixth hitter in this Miami order. Switch hitter batting from the left side. And good thing for the Red Hawks as well, no outs. You got Zarlingo. That's right. Got no base hits, but can change it right here. Helgill deals that one outside for ball one. The Miami dugout is all up on the fence. No one is sitting down on that side. Helgith deals the 1-0. That one's in for a strike to even the count, one and one at 87. Feels like that pitch was just a little bit of a see if he can find the strike zone type pitch. Helgith deals, Zarlingo gets a piece of that but ends up fouling it off. Two men on, no outs here in the bottom of the ninth. Tying run at the plate, Miami down 5-2. Here in Oxford, looking for the series sweep. Helgeth deals. Zarlingo shoots that one right to the shortstop. Bryson Webb, and he makes the play for the first out of the inning. Just a liner right to him. Didn't even have to move. Yeah, the fortunate thing there for Zarlingo, it wasn't on the ground, you know. It's in the air, so no harm, no foul. One out, and... There's still some life here with David Novak up to the plate, but hopefully the next one doesn't go on the ground for a double play. Just got to stay alive here for Miami. David Novak up to the plate. Novak, the man that walked it off against Helgeth on Friday. So this is going to be an interesting matchup here. He fouls the first pitch off to the right side. 0-1 here early. See who wins the battle here. This could be huge. Helgeth deals. That's low and away for ball one. Novak got his first hit of the game in his last at bat. Before that, did not register in at bat as he had walked the previous two times. Helgeth deals high. That's ball two. Novak is really looking to get a walk here. You don't have to be a hero by any means. Just go station to station and Make this thing even tougher here on Helgeth. Two and one count, one out. Helgeth deals. That one's low. The runners are moving as the ball gets away from Verberg. And now there are two runners in scoring position, second and third for the Red Hawks with David Novak up. Ryan Novak at third. Dylan Baker after the hit by pitch. Moves to second. Three and one here on Novak. Helgeth deals. Novak swings and just gets a piece of it. He was looking for that one. That was a really good pitch from Helgeth in the lower half. He got Novak to bite, and he'll try and be ahead on this yeah. one. But the good news is, though, even if you hit the ball on the ground, like you said earlier, Andrew, yeah. there's no play. There's no chance for a double play now. Not anymore. Helgeth deals the three-two, and he takes the walk. David Novak. Loads the bases on ball four on the inside. Now it's Evan Applewick, the pinch hitter that came up. Replace Trey Keels. Coming up with the bases loaded as the winning run here in the bottom of the ninth. And for Applewick here, he's not a huge power guy by no means, but. Just trying to drive in runs. He's a safe option. That's he's right. Very patient, and he also has two homers, so he's got power when he needs to. Helgeth deals that one low and away for ball one on Applewick. Miami down 5-2. Applewick is the winning run. As Helgeth deals that one in for a strike to even the count. Again, not dialing it up on that pitch. 89 miles an hour. We've seen him hit 93. Helgeth moving quickly here. He deals the 1-1 one -one as Applewick takes a swing and fouls that one off high in the zone. Yeah, that one was way 
above the strike zone. Don't really know why a patient hitter like Applewick really swung there, but this could be a huge next pitch as he's down one and two. One, two pitch here. Helgeth gets the strikeout. Applewick goes down looking on the outside corner. And the Red Hawks are down to their final out with the bases loaded for the third time in this game. Pinch hitter Justin Gorski coming up to the plate. And Gorski on Friday against Helgeth got his stand up triple. We'll see what he can do here. Gorski grounds that one to first base, and that'll do it. Helgeth works into and out of the jam to save the series sweep. Miami still wins the series two to one, but nonetheless a frustrating outing for the Miami offense who only register two runs and a total of six hits, getting most of their base runners from walks by the Central Michigan pitcher. So Helgeth wins the battle against the Miami Redhawks offense in the bottom of the ninth inning with the chance to walk it off for the home team, but nothing doing. So Miami falls five to two to Central Michigan, still win the series, but are not even in MAC play now, two and four, moving their record to seven and 10 on the season. Yeah, and those pass to at bats, Applewick and Gorski, first for Applewick, you know, you have a patient hitter like him. He's just pretty much a surefire walk. The fact that, you know, the game is on the line and you just stay put. You need a big hitter in that situation and he certainly wasn't that And for Gorski, just a quick out. But, you know, the Red Hawks fought. You can't say they didn't. And as a fan, you gotta appreciate that. They, they had chances three times. The bases were loaded and just came up empty. But, you know, you win the series, you rebound from the really tough Bowling Green series. And for CMU, they came in to this series with a 3-14 and 14 record. Today they were on a 13-game losing streak. They now end it. And for Jake Sable, he gets his first conference win in his CMU tenure. So good job for CMU. And Miami will have to tune it up against Butler on Tuesday. Should be a fun one here at home. As the two teams exchange fist bumps, this series comes to a close in Oxford. Like you said, Andrew, two midweek matchups against Butler first and then the University of Cincinnati in a rivalry game. Those are always great games. Absolutely. Fans are gonna be out. Yep. So that'll do it here from Oxford, Ohio. Thank you for listening to us on Red Hawk Radio. This has been the St. Patrick's Day edition of Miami baseball. Miami falls by a score of five to two to the Central Michigan University Chippewas. Still win the series two to one and leave this weekend with a record of seven and 10 overall. My name is Jeff Middleton for Andrew Rovis and our crew here at Red Hawk Radio. We thank you very much for listening and have a great week, everybody.